very important for Najin. That's right. Yep, here we go. Picks and bans for game number one between Najin the Empire and SK Telecom T1. And yeah, if Najin can win this and if CJ somehow loses to Samsung, Najin gets to play one less match next week. And I'm sure that's what they'd prefer to do. The Maokai ban starting things off. Yeah, Maokai and then Kalista. So taking oh. out Barin's, one of Barin's best champions. I'm curious what Duke is going to play in the top lane. Maybe looking to bust out that Olaf again. These are interesting bands here from uh, Red Side. You don't see the, the Maokai you do see once in a while, but the Rise on uh, Red Side is kind of interesting. Well, Najin always, always bans Rise. That is their thing these days. They uh, won a couple games on it, but it wasn't because of the Rise that they necessarily won. It's just been something that Najin has not wanted to deal with at all. And they ban it every game, whether it's Red Side or Blue Side. Very interesting. I'm not entirely sure why they would make those decisions. Gragas will be the final ban, so not just looking to first pick Rek'Sai, it would appear, That's but that will be like, banned. Ah, okay. Rek'Sai. So do they go for the victor, victor here? Yeah, you would think they would. You would think they would. It would be the most uh, logical choice, but the question is then, you know, what does Faker have planned to take care of it? His Azir isn't the greatest that we've seen. Well, it's, it's fine, but it's just not on the level of some of Faker's other champions. And first picking that Lucian, wow. I don't think Bang was really going to prioritize that, but they really want OQ on it, and for good reason, too. He's got a 70% win rate on this champion right now. Yeah, and we've seen SK Telecom play Lucian. They played it in that extraordinary Game 4 in the playoffs last season where Bang was really able to hard carry on yeah. it. But Lucian's undergone some changes since then, and the Evelyn lock-in, no surprise. Three jungle bands. We rarely see this anymore, actually. Three jungle bands coming through. So Kogma and Evelyn may, in fact, be SK Telecom's answers, taking a will. relatively safe lane. And what is Watch going to play now? Is he going to default to Lee Sin? That's what I'm kind of wondering, because every other powerful or popular jungler is kind of out of commission right now. And, and this is a really, this is a really risky situation for Najin actually, because Watch has been a, a weaker link here and there when he can't get on a champion that he's really comfortable on. Goong is going to be uh, grabbing that Azir rather than taking the victor. They're going to grab the Annie for pure. So still waiting on that jungle pick for now. Yeah, they don't need to take a jungler, and Najin has really liked to draft Annie in the first round on the red side. Now Goong prioritizing the Azir. Uh, this means that the victor is going to be locked in, but. Najin is coming in wanting to win lane versus Faker. So try and stop that snowball. Azir definitely has a preferential laning phase if it is not interrupted. And they have some ways to get kills too. A roaming Annie could be quite powerful here. They could take the rumble away from Marin, although I imagine that Marin would go Nar. I'm hoping, Doa, he goes Shen with the Evelyn. We'll see. If the Nar gets picked up by Duke, I think that's. Fairly likely. Yep, there's a lease in for Watch. Not a whole lot else for him to choose from. A champion pool certainly a bit limited. Okay, so Nar will be taken. A very safe blind pick for the top laner. Uh, Najin's team composition looking very good. There's a lot of early game power here between Lee Sin and Annie. So whether they get the lane swap or not, and the Shen is the pick that makes the most sense with this composition. Well, like he can both peel with the shield, or you get that classic Shen Evelyn flank engage. Yeah, well, like you mentioned earlier, too, this is a pick that SK Telecom has been more or less avoiding since it's become popular, and it would be it'd be interesting for them to show they could play it in their last match before the finals. I think you do show you can play it now, because that will make teams really have to reconsider how to draft against you. Uh, if they know that you're not going to just ban it, it throws a big wrench in the machinery of your draft phase, and they're going to lock it in. So this will be Marin's first Shen game this season. Yeah, we'll see how he performs on that. It's tough to play Shen and Dinar, though. It really is. Well, you uh, just get poked so hard by uh, the range. Yeah, you just you just kind of get messed up by a Black Cleaver Nar constantly just shredding through your armor yeah. and autoing you from that range. Najin, uh, I'm curious as to see what this level one's going to look like, what lanes each team wants to get. SK Telecom going for a classic poke lane with very little sustain, but that all-in pressure on a Kog'Maw from the Annie is really quite dangerous. But if you go for the 2v2, or if you go for the lane swap, then that unlocks 
Annie on the map, and you have to be worried about this Victor against, he's going to take a lot of poke damage against Azir, and Watch and Pure may be able to all in him. Yeah, you'd think this is a situation where we might see like a level two gank possibly. Yeah, right. potentially, especially if there is a lane swap going down. So interesting draft here from both of the teams. I like both comps. I think you've got great peel for the late game damage of Victor and Kog'Maw. If this game goes late, SK Telecom will have the higher damage. Lucian does fall off in the late game compared to most other AD carries. Well, we'll see. Najin with a huge opportunity here. Again, a win against SK Telecom at least puts them in the position where if CJ loses, they can skip a match. They can move ahead to third place in the standings. I mean, obviously their fate is in their own hands as far as it goes for match number one. Let's see who takes it. And welcome to Sumner's Rift. Najin EM Fire versus SK Telecom T1, Faker and the gang already have a spot for the World Championships locked down, but they want to at least leave the regular season looking strong and uh, getting Faker that MVP if they can put him in a position to perform well in both of their wins today, if they can win it. He'll be able to overtake someday. All right, they are going to see Wolf there, so Pure not going to be surprised in the brush on the Annie. OQ already in lane, curiously enough, so hmm. let's see how they actually played this one out. He is going for the element of surprise. They will not see him on any of these wards. They are actively placing down. Reaction will be for Watch and Duke to simply go ward up in the topside jungle. Yeah, do you think we're going to see any Early lane cheese from OQ and Pure here. Um, I wonder. Or do you think we're just going to see the lane swap from SKT? All right. So they are going to try and swap into top lane right now. So OQ. Oh, nope. Well, they it will be a lane swap situation right now, as we see Bang and Wolf still on the top side. They have don't know where anybody right now is on well, the side. They're heading back down again. Yeah, they're, huh. con they're confused. Because they, they haven't seen anything like this. This is just a big mind game right now. They want to avoid the 2v2, I think. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it, though. Bang. Okay, so they finally see OQ, but they are still going to have to go down into this bottom side. Shen not even doing a, a jungle follow this game. Instead, wow. just starting up in the top side immediately. This is a little bit of a wacky level one that we just saw, but... Well, like you said, the mind games are strong. And SKT is going to need to be really, really careful in this 2v2. OQ and Pure have a very strong lane with the all-in. And uh, there's certainly players that can back that kind of thing up. Yeah, they also got to lane a little bit faster because Bang and Wolf were leashing. So now they have quite a bit of pressure here to get this level 2 faster. Some nice trading there with Bang. And what are we going to see? Looks like Gnar will just TP into the top side after helping out with the Krugs and the red buff. Wow, OQ and Pure being so aggressive in this lane. And Pure with that stun loaded up really can zone Wolf and Bang out of this. Yeah, I think they have about one creep left until they hit level two. So they're doing, oh, no, two. it's like one more. There we go. All right, and dashing ahead for a little bit more damage on the Wolf. Yeah, this is uh, going to be a tough situation, at least in the early game for Bang and Wolf. Eventually, though, that long-range poke will have a lot of effect uh, against the sustainless lane of Lucian and Annie. Well, Bengi coming in to harass Goong a little bit. You can't really gank early with Evelyn too effectively because you don't really have the CC, but maybe he can poke him out. Doesn't look like Bengi's going to give it a try, though. No, and Fager doesn't have Ignite this game. He's running cleanse due to the Annie and the Gnar, so it's a less attractive option. Bengi instead just going to poke into the enemy jungle and see if he can find anything. Maybe wrapping around right now for a gank. Yeah, oh, well, oh. they know how aggressive OQ and Pure are going to be, and there's no wards there. Bengi could come in and cause some trouble here. Bang and Wolf, they do not lack for health right now. And here comes Bengi. He's got the double buffs. They're going on to Pure. Pure uses that stun right away. The hate spike's coming in, but I don't think they're going to be able to get it. They get the flash from Pierre. Can they get another summoner from Oku? Doesn't look like it. Bengi, wow, goes back in and takes a lot of damage. Pops that W for the speed boost, and he'll get out. But 
well, Summoner used by Pure there. Well, they're going to feel pretty good about that because they yep. got Annie's Flash. So that eliminates a lot of the kill pressure. Now they're going to be able to posture more aggressively in the lane. Uh, SK Telecom, they Wolf kind of messed up that gank a little bit. He telegraphed really hard yeah, right as Evelyn was coming in. Yeah, Pure and Oki were already on the way out when uh, Bengi made his appearance. Oh, well. Well, we already know from uh, fairy tales that wolves aren't very good actors. <laughs> so that's no surprise, really, I guess. Not going to uh, win any Academy Awards anytime soon. I don't, I don't think so. Nope. Uh, still, though, this is really preferable because Helps you can see lane. there's the Bioarcane Barrage coming in. Really problematic. Bengi going for another gank nice here. Nice taunt onto Duke there. Bengi doing a lot of damage. Duke's going to have to use that flash. No, not even bothering. Gets taken out, and that's first blood going to Bengi. Yeah, you don't use the flash right there. Marin and Bengi still had their both flashes up. He was dead. Mm. Uh, and he tried to go for the... He has a Vamp Scepter. Huh. I wonder if he's going Blade of the Ruined King. That would be very interesting. That would be the first time we've seen this in this matchup. Well, I mean, uh, the attack speed would help you harass even harder, I suppose. Yeah. And obviously having the active is nice, too, but... Well, it's just a, especially it counters Shen's ability to really, oops, well, that's not going to work out. <laughs> w on to Pure right there, not the best yeah. gank. It's like, gee, I wonder if Lee Sin's coming in. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm curious where he's going with that item. Uh, I could definitely see the Blade of the Ruined King on a split pushing Gnar. That could be a powerful factor to keep Shen next to his turret at all times and just keep control of him so he can't use those double globals quite so well. Good start for Bengi, though. Anyone who says Bengi can't be aggressive, come on, guys. Well, yeah, he certainly can be. Uh, we'll see what happens as the champion pool shifts. Uh, I mean, we're kind of going back in time right now to Lee Sin, Elise, Evelyn territory when it comes to jungling. And a lot more players in the past week have been really going for this laning phase, picking the Lee yeah. Sin, going warrior enchant then just moving straight into, uh, or having a Lucian on the team and trying to bully out. So we're moving into a more uh, early game focused meta here in Korea, which is quite wow. interesting. Baker going way up for the Rass on Dagoon, taking a lot of poke in return. Man, that was not worth it for the trade from Faker. Well, he has to be really careful too. Look yeah. at the vision in the river right now. They Najin has three pink wards in the river already to try and keep track of Bengi's Evelyn. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Bengi coming oh. from behind. He's not spotted by that ward because it's not Pure a vision ward. still stacking ward. his stun. This is really dangerous. Here comes He's Shen. Level six. There we go. Stun or slow rather on to Pure. They get the stun on to Bengi though. Pure goes down yet again. Exhaust on to Oku. Nice knock up from Wolf. That's going to be two kills. And Marin gets one with the stand united. Coming down to help out his AD carry. Wow. That is. I mean, you have so many pink wards on the map. And that was pretty much. The only avenue, besides coming around through River, that Bengi could have had to get there undetected. Yeah. Watch going to try and go on to Bengi right here. He doesn't know that Lee Sin is there. Yeah, Bengi could be in a little bit of trouble. You're taking a lot of damage. He's almost certainly going down. Here comes Wolf, though. There's a shield. And he bails his jungler out as here comes Faker. Watch is in a lot of trouble now. Knock up on the Goong. Watch comes back in for the execute on to Faker. Uh -oh. Might pay for it, though. Watch still alive, but it looks like they're going to get away with one there. Faker not respecting the summoner heal from Goong, and he gets caught in a choke point. It ends up going down, nearly takes out Watch, but Goong helps him out with the summoner spell. Yeah. Well, Bengi left to save that mid lane for now. You know, going back to that action in the bot lane with the double kill for SK Telecom, I suppose to a certain extent, Najin is very one dimensional as far as what they're going to do in the early game. You know, OQ and Pure are going to be aggressive. And so it's kind of up to SKT and any other team to sort of find a way to handle that. Yeah. Handled it well up until uh, until uh, Faker died there. Well, at a certain point, though, you just really need to get pink wards into the bottom side. That is something that Najin failed to do as a team. They were playing much more actively around Goon rather than the bottom lane. But the bottom lane has been the one that's been pushed up nearly this entire game. And that's a good thing for Najin. They want to put the pressure on. They want to get the early tower and play around OQ's ability to lane bully with this Lucian, but the warding just hasn't been there from Pure and Watch in order to back it up, and that's what we see. But it was a great gank from SKT, very well set up with the Stand United, but poor communication from Najin to 
even let that happen. You know that the Stand United is up. Now, Duke is doing very well with this Cutlass in the top side. Marin is super low. Yeah, certainly helping a lot. Bengi coming up to protect him just in case there's going to be a gank. And looks like Najin does want to try something here. This is an interesting adaptation. Another matchups. Uh oh, oh, here comes here the dive. Go. Can he get there in time, though? I think Marin might be dead. There's the flash, gets away. Nice egg, and he's embraced. Marin fighting for his life, goes down, but Watch will go down with him. And now Bengi trying to chase Duke. Duke going Meganar, but not soon enough. That's a double kill for Bengi. Meanwhile, down the bot lane, a little bit of fighting as well. Pure getting low, but nobody's going to die there. Bengi's having some great reads on these lanes. He knows exactly where Watch wants to be. Now, that one was pretty obvious because Duke had just gotten the Cutlass, and Marin was extremely low in that lane. But Duke, you know, didn't have the Meganar up. He's quite squishy with this build. Remember, at least with, a, at least with the Phage into the Black Cleaver, he gets some HP. This is a sustain-oriented build, so there's a very small window of time that you have to actually tower dive somebody even though Watch did go for the Cinder Hulk Lee Sin. Here we go. Yeah, wow, Wolf Sand United coming in onto him. OQ fighting Bang, doing a lot of damage. Bang tank gets turret hit too, but OQ will go down. Bang getting a kill there. Wolf in a lot of trouble, gets taken out by Watch. And now Marin running for his life here, gets stunned by Pure. Kook over the wall with the Emperor's Divide, and Marin, I don't think you're making it out of that one, buddy. Sorry. No, he is not. He is going to go down. So right there, Mistake by SKT. I mean, they want to get that tower dive. They want to be able to make that play and shut down OQ. But at the same time, uh, the Azir was free just to walk down into that side. They knew he was coming. They had a ton of wards to suss that out, but they can't get out of the gank in time. Marin's Flash was already down. Now, with Emperor's Divide being out of the way for a little while, does this leave room for Faker to be a bit more aggressive, maybe even going for a dragon here soon? Well, we will see how that pans out. I wonder. One thing, one part of Marin uh, doing well in this lane, however, has come at the cost of his CS. Of course, with five assists, he has 100% kill contribution right now. He's going to be just fine when it comes to gold. Yeah. He already completes that. Sunfire Cape. Wow, a lot of damage onto OQ. Good zoning from Bang as well. But the first turn of the game does go over to Najin. Goon could be in a little bit of trouble. Tries to get out. Watch is there to protect him, so he'll be fine. Yeah, that tower, really important. Nearly evens up the gold in this game when it comes to that global share, despite, of course, SK Telecom having a couple more kills, and the pressure this NAR is going to put on is going to be immense. And I really like that we're seeing Najin build for split pushing in this game, build for that lane dominance. Pink Ward right in the river brush. Uh, this dragon might be a little bit risky for SK Telecom. OQ and Pure coming up, but if they do, they could get cut off by Bang and Wolf. So it looks like SKT will get the first dragon to answer that first turret. Yeah, Goom wasn't there, so great timing for SK Telecom to take the dragon. No real issue especially since uh, OQ and Pure have been delayed more or less. OQ having to go for that Avarice Blade now to try and catch back up in the lane instead of finishing his Infinity Edge faster. Yeah, it's starting to get kind of tough for OQ down there. Well, when it, comes, when it comes to Najin, though, if you think about it, they know their composition is going to be weaker in the late game, so what do they need to do? They need to get an early tower advantage here, and they're pushing that very nicely. Oh, Wolf saving that gank. Bang was in a little bit of trouble after the tippers came down, but Wolf was able to get the ult off. Both summoners used by Bang, though. Yeah, flash used by Pure to set it up. Yeah. But when it comes to what we're seeing here, They've, what Najin has done, even though they played poorly around their bottom lane, they played very well when it comes to vision around Goong, and that's resulting in this happening right now, which is him just taking down the mid lane turret. Goong just gets a turret, but Faker wants to get Goong. Chaos Storm comes down, Aegis of Braves comes in. Faker barely survives the onslaught from Goong, but Bang in a lot of trouble as well here too. Everybody all over him. There's OQ's first kill of the game. Marn comes down with the teleport wow. after Stand United didn't work out for him. Yeah, the Stand United into the mid lane onto Faker and then the immediate teleport by Marin. He just went to every wow. single lane on the map. It did work out. <laughs> it yeah. did, it did work out. He wanted to maintain that 100% uh -oh. kill participation. Oh, Duke, Duke, Duke get in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. flashes, gets Flashes away. after he sees Wolf yep. going there, afraid that there might be some sort of crowd control or the Flash used by Wolf to try and lock down that kill. So the Blade of the Ruin King, trying to get back to this. If you can continue to push down towers and get a gold lead, 
maybe you can scrap out with the victor and the Kog'Maw in the late game. So it's an interesting strategy for sure. Uh, we'll see if it works out. I like Duke's TP quite a bit right there coming into the dive on the turret. But it was an even trade across the map when all is said and done. SK Telecom still up a couple kills, but down two towers, leaving us with a very interesting and a very even game. Yeah, gold-wise, things are even, but Najin is in a position where they can uh, maybe start to push that map advantage a little bit more with the uh, outer turrets down in mid and top. Although I feel like that's not quite as valuable as having, like, mid and bottom gone, you know? Yeah, that's... Yeah, the, the mid is, is a huge problem right now. This is usually how SK Telecom wins, is by taking early mid turrets with Victor mm -hmm. and then just having Faker run around everywhere, but he's not going to have that option. My big question, Doa, is how well does Najin ward the top jungle? Because this is the area they need to control. Duke does not have the HP to play in team fights right now. He is only a 1v1 threat versus Marin. So you have to play around that, make sure that there's no interference. He will win the 1v1. Yeah, so far the warding really non-existent in that top jungle for Najin. Yeah, so you have to be careful there. And it's so hard because you're playing against an Evelyn. Oh, was yeah, seen. I saw him, yeah. Faker tag with a sonic wave, but no follow up there. And I guess they're going to try and play around that bottom side instead, try and get some ganks down, but a little bit dangerous. Marin still has no answer if they come in, and instead they're going to go for another tower, just putting some damage down with that Azir. SKT was converging on the mid lane a little bit. Wolf was coming in, but. Najin wisely backing off before things got a little bit too crazy. It's going to be really hard for Najin to execute this properly. But if they can do it, it's going to be impressive. And here wow. we go, the Marin. the old all-in. Marin, uh, Megadar. Very low. Flash, Megadar, 1Q, he dodges it. Marin barely gets away. Very close, but he knew that the Meganar was coming through. He calculated correctly that that last stack would not actually end his life, but yeah. you can see the problems in these 1v1, and Bengi needs to be very careful Whoa, about where he shows in. himself. There's Divide watches there as well, too. Faker very low already, manages to dodge. A lot of the damage, Marin comes in with the stand United. They're going to turn it around onto Goog, and Faker walks out of that fight alive, which is pretty amazing. Man, Marin has been, just been saving people left and right oh. here. Flash knock up on the Pure. Pure does have a stun. He can turn this one around if he wants to. Here comes Bengi. Watches there as well. There's a kill again for Marin. No, simply not enough damage there. OQ, remember, way. he's behind. He still doesn't have a single core item yet. SK Telecom coming down. I don't really know what Najin expected when the Stand United was up uh, for that that scrap in the mid lane. Faker did misplace his Chaos Storm at first, so I think maybe they thought without that burst. Oh! oh wow, just killed with the culling. Oak, you burst Faker down. Didn't even have to use a summoner for that, Faker. Yeah. No flash after that tussle, so Oak, you just goes for it. And OQ is so good at using the culling. It's one of his strong points in terms of his Lucian play is his accuracy on that ability. I can't wait to see that. Highlight, OQ, man, coming up with the big kill. Hopefully we get to, because that is huge. To shut Faker down like that, and OQ really desperately needs the kills as well. Yeah, he does, so let's see what happens right here. Faker, oh, very low. Faker should have gone back a while ago. Oh, that was... Okay, <laughs> well, that was less right. awesome than I had hoped. Well, that was kind of sad, but Faker probably should have gone back a little bit earlier. It was still low from that close fight he had a minute or two ago. Faker going for early home guards. This is a build he's just trying to get into lane to farm as much as he can. I think this is a little bit desperate considering that SK Telecom is in fact in the lead in this game. It might not feel like that though. I mean, it's it's been so close. Both junglers have three kills. SKT looking a little bit better, of course, but they've lost a couple turrets too. So I think SKT is certainly feeling the uh, feeling the pressure a little bit here. Well, he's, he's also doing just as well as Goong is, really. He's a little bit behind in terms of CS, but that's not the biggest deal. Dragon is live now. Uh, Najin definitely having a superior vision control. But we'll see who ends up with it in the end. Uh, Tibbers is almost back up, so that will be quite useful. Marin has his Stand United available, and he's just been counter-jungling right now. He doesn't even want to be in lane versus Duke. But SK Telecom should absolutely just try and snowball off of the Dragons. Duke is not useful at all when it comes to team fighting. All he has is Boots 2 and a Blade. And they have started that Dragon already. They're going to take it easily. Scrying Orb will reveal what's up, but SKT gets their second Dragon. 
Yeah. So this is a great way for SKT to win. Not only do they have the superior late game composition, they are starting to really threaten in terms of the dragon stacks and Probably Duke is not going to really be able to contest this until Dragon 4, which means that he must get advantages in split pushing. That is the only way that Najin wins. Well, he's so squishy right now that he can't really big, be that big front line. Not for a long time yet. Oh, they don't have anybody who can be that big front line, Doha. Yeah. Lee Sin's well, not quite there yet, and he will never be there. I think the front line is called Emperor's Divide this game. <laughs> Well, Nara will get there. Nara will get there. And Marin does have to be really careful. Oh, not when Bengi's coming up, though. Duke in a little bit of trouble. Uses that Nara to throw Marin against the wall. But here comes Bengi. Duke gets taken out. Another kill for Bengi. Just really baited into that one. Well, Oops. if you want to play like that in the top side, you have to have pink wards against the Evelyn there. Yes. That's just how it works. Well, um, this Evelyn was such a great pickup after the Rek'Sai side was banned. I mean, SKT's like, all right, well, good luck with warding. Now, I think this blade is fine, but it is really an all-in move. Remember that that gives Gnar two types of percent health damage, which does make him do a lot of damage to tanks in a split push, but at the same time, it's very risky. Yeah. Meanwhile, blue buff must be handed over to Goom. Faker just pushing up the mid lane, managing to keep up on CS all game long. Okay. What a game Marin has had, though. I mean, if... I think uh, the question, can Marin play Shen, so far has been answered with a pretty resounding yes. Oh, yeah, you get 100% kill contribution, right? Yeah, that helps uh, for a been, top laner. Been absolutely everywhere on the map. Had the setups, has had the synergy with Bengi, which is what you need in this particular situation. Uh, Shen Eve has always been a strong combination of champions, and they're showing why this game, Bengi... I think he's a very smart jungler. He's finding the holes in the vision and then exploiting it. And there's the uh, tying turret for SK Telecom. They get their second as well up in that top lane. And SKT, despite a, a couple little shaky moments here and there, is really starting to come back strong. Yeah, and at this point, we talk about a two dragon lead, a 2.5K gold lead here at 21 minutes. It is going to be really hard for SK Telecom to lose this game because of the way that Najin has built and the fact that they can't contest whatsoever until we hit the ultra late game. And even then, just fundamentally on paper, their composition is going to be weaker. So, uh -oh. oh, wow, on to watch. Nice knock up from Wolf. He's going to go over, kick bang out of there. Chaos Storm dropped. Faker not getting a ton of damage done with it. This will at least maybe result in a mid lane turret, although there's not a minion wave there right now. Nice poke from Goon. Yeah, still going to be hard to actually secure this. They can't dive Should it with be. the Annie, and the calling is still up and ready to be used. Now you think it would be pretty soon? Nope, just using the regular burst there. Are they actually going to dive this? No, Risky. No, just, they're just zoning uh, out for okay. the red buff. Yeah, yeah, just taking that red buff, and anyone who comes through will take a lot of damage, like OQ just did. Yeah, they're going to try and get some poke down and see if they can initiate. Pure's going to come oh, in. Yeah, that's right. Has to use that up for his divide early. Pure does come in, but no support as Goon had to run away. Duke comes in, though. Gets exhausted right away. Nice, Nar. They're going to take out Bang almost immediately. Oku doing a lot of damage to Bangy. There's a kill for him. Shen gets in the back line. Mar might be able to pick one up. Oh. Baker gets some damage down onto Watch. But Watch comes in for the XCU. Can he get him? Knock up from Wolf. Tries to run away with that safeguard. They're going to let him go. Marin trying to tumble ward away before he gets killed. And <laughs> he's out of there. Right on the one. Watch. Somehow finds Faker. Wolf on the run. Goon trying to chase him. Wow. So another even trade after everything right there. SKT still Jeez. two kills ahead in this game. A uh, bit risky to try and make a play that aggressively on the red buff right there, but I don't think they expected Najin to actually try and contest that in any way, shape, or form. Well, it looked really bad when Goong had to use that Emperor's Divide early on defensively. Well, but it blocked it blocked an exit point for yeah. SK Telecom, so it actually ended up working really well. The choke was blocked, and then he just jammed it full of Sand Soldiers, so SKT did not have an easy escape route. It's really interesting. Marin with that stellar Shen wave clear is going to try to push that one back. I guess he does have Sunfire Cape, so it's not as bad as All right. Let's watch this again. Yeah, this is really a confusing fight. So basically, SKT can't exit oh, yeah. down into the river right now because of everything that's happened. Duke comes in with a really good teleport into the Gnar, and look how much damage Goon does from the outside. Just instant death. 
and they're able to collapse and turn this into a little bitty skirmish. And that's that's where this Gnar is actually going to shine, right? When he can skirmish, deal damage with to one or two other champions, and they already eliminated the burst uh, from Kogma and Faker. Wow, nice Beautiful. play for watch. Very nice. Great, Q. great Lee Sin play. That is, that is a level of mechanics we don't usually see from Watch. I was just about to say, yeah, we, we don't see Watch throwing plays like that. That was gorgeous. Yeah. It's world's time, Monty. That's why, <laughs> man. Goom used that Emperor's Divide to push Bengi back again. He's going to pop over the wall right there. Has Pure with his stun loaded just in case he needs it. And Emperor's Divide not going to be useful. But this mid lane turret still at a vexingly high HP for SK Telecom. They really need this to go down. Well, they really need at least that lane to be pushed up so they can go for the Dragon. OQ, meanwhile, will take that Tier 1 in bot lane. Will he be cut off, though? That's going to uh -oh. nearly even the gold up again. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Shen's back. Yeah, Shen coming in. They get the slow. Is he going to be close enough? OQ flashes. Can they get there with the taunt? Doesn't hit the taunt, but OQ is so low anyway. Another kill for Marin. That's going to make Dragon a definite possibility for SK Telecom here. Yeah, especially Duke actually burned his TP right there. That is not a good time to use that ability. Well, OQ pushed up watch. too far, and yep. there aren't enough pink wards on the map to defend against this Evelyn. You have to have something there if you're OQ. Otherwise, you're in the real danger of just dying. And since Marin finished his Randuin to Randuin's Omen, he didn't have Flash, but he was able to taunt in range of OQ and slow him with the Randuin's active to actually secure the kill. Yeah. It works out. SKT still with a small lead here. But the big deal is the Dragons. SK Telecom yeah. with all three Dragons so far. And that's something that once they get that fourth Dragon, especially once they get that fifth Dragon, is going to blow this game wide open. Yeah, that is certainly a major consideration for Najin right now, how in the world are they going to fight at some of these dragons? Marin is simply far too tanky to really be taking damage from anybody right now, and he's been building primarily armor, so OQ not going to provide very much until he finishes that last Whisper. He is getting closer. It's kind of a matter of using that mobility that Najin has to avoid Marin and try to pick people off on the outskirts of the fight, I suppose. I'm impressed that Najin has actually been able to keep this even in terms of gold. It's it's something that I don't think they should have been able to do, given their team composition and, most importantly, the NAR itemization. But they've managed to make it work. They've gotten that outer ring of turrets down first. They played well in the top and mid with that pressure, but they just haven't been able to get enough of a lead, I feel, onto OQ in this game to really make a difference. Goong, it seems like, has been having to use that ult defensively for the last couple fights now, too. He's gotten some kills, but it's been a bit, a bit crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, and how are they going to deal with this Kog'Maw right now? Bang may be behind in terms of CS, but his damage is becoming quite large, and he doesn't need any armor penetration yet. In fact, he could, with the Aegis on the watch, the delayed Randuin's onto Duke. Theoretically, he could just go into a trend, uh, an Infinity Edge next and be just fine. Yeah. Naja trying to push up the lanes for now. They've got some decent wards down. If they can maybe take a Baron, they can get enough turrets to make SKT sweat a bit. Well, look at SKT's wards. They have control over that bottom side, which means they can see anyone coming to help out Duke. When it comes to that split push, Duke has no wards from his team in the bottom side jungle, so there's not really a great place for him to split push right now. He could simply die if he's in that situation. There's the calling coming down, not going to provide very much coke, poke, and it doesn't actually clear out the minion wave. Now that one didn't work out quite as well for OQ. Well, somebody's going to have to respond to Nar now. Nar finally going to be getting a ward in there to make himself feel a little safer. He's going to see Kogma rotating into the bottom side, and that means Duke. Okay, well, they left again, so I guess he's here now that Marin, they feel safe now that Marin is here. Naja trying to set up a pick right now. Here they come, flank and around the side. Oh. Bengi actually gets caught out by a pink board. That was a good pink board from Naja. Yeah, Pier calls it off. Could have come in with that flash tippers, but didn't do it. Duke uh -oh. coming from the side, though. This is still dangerous. Knock up Wolf in trouble. Shen uses his ult right away to try to save his support. He comes in. Will there be a taunt used? Not quite. So they got the stand united out of Marin, at least. 
Yeah, they, they save Wolf. Uh, not sure the Steady United was really necessary there. Probably could have just gotten out of that with the Monsoon. But it doesn't really matter. With Shen, it's just a case of better safe than sorry. Najin may actually try and sneak this Baron right now. It's not uh, going to work. I don't think so. Yeah, SKT. SKT knows what's up. Okay. They're jumping to Marin, but that's not the person who you can really do a lot of chipping damage to right now. No, it's not. He's built full tank. Yeah. And they don't have a ward in. But they're going to see Gnar head into the top side to clear out the wave. Get another one in at the back of the pit. So Najin tried to find a cute little timing there for the Baron, but SK Telecom reacting immediately. And here comes oh, the port. Teleport Duke coming in. No opportunities, though. Even Bengi gets out of that one. Yeah, so that teleport was, down. It's not a good teleport from Duke. Uh, really. uh, SK Telecom was already too far gone in order to make that work. And now Marin's just like, well, now I have global pressure. Time to go back to split pushing on Shen. Yeah, pretty much. Whoa, Bengi, nice kick from Watch. And they're going to pick him off. OQ with another kill there. Watch didn't Whoa. even have to flash to get that. And yeah. now this is where you all in at the Baron. Najin has to do the Baron right now. This is their. Probably one chance to win this game. Oh, well, they're going to go for it. Goon clearing out some wards here. They've got their own behind the pit as well, too. Now, Marin knows what's up. Is SK Telecom going to contest this? Teleport yep. coming in for Marin. He certainly wants to. Doesn't want to use that San United. Baron getting low. It will be taken by Naja, but will they win the fight? Faker goes in way too deep. Gets taken out immediately. And now Watch chasing oh, the Naja. Big Nar out from Duke. And this is a huge fight for Najin. They got the Baron, and they will get the team fight, too. They can just walk down and get ready for this dragon now. Yeah, the dragon take is the most important part of this. If I'm SKT, I don't take this fight. There's no reason to actually... If Marin. You, you, uh, what are Marin you doing, buddy? There's playing with stun. Raptors. Trying to distract them. They're going to get the turret anyway. I don't think the Raptors are that important. Bengi is alive, but they may be able to get an inhibitor turret off of this too. Yeah, can they? How far can they push down? It's really important that they don't give up the dragon. Yeah... And they're going to go for it. Wow, Najin going in really far. They're going to get Marin, though. Flashing away. Is it enough? It is. OQ takes him down, and they're going to turn and grab the inhibitor on the way out. Now, Najin members are very low right now. Everybody but SK Telecom up. Can they get the dragon? Yeah, they need to get this dragon, because if SKT gets to four stacks, even though they did a lot of work with this Baron, all that work could be four not. It's a race, man. SK well, Telecom. Well, Marin's not up. So, But again, like you said, Goong is low. No Bangadar as well, too, and that's going to be some serious poke coming out from Bang. They're going to start the dragon right away. Bengi there to try to zone. Najin looking dangerous. Yeah, they're trying to get the blue buff. Oh, they're just trying to de delay. They need 15 seconds for Marin. So Najin trying to play the long game here, but they are still poked out. And they don't have Tibbers, so SKT should just go for this. Great call from SKT. Just go right now. Yep. That's right, Marin's there. He can come in with the San United yep. if they need him to. No OQ. This has to be a really heroic steal from Watch. Duke's about to go Meganar, and he's got the all back up again. And oh, oh Goon gets, gets the it. dragon! He stole it with the Sand Soldiers! Wow, that damage just barely wasn't there in time. Smite not used by Bengi. They're going to go back in. They separate Marin from the rest of the team. Can they kill him, though? They've got the rest of SKT coming from the side. And Goon could be in a little bit of trouble. Never mind. OQ's killing people now. There goes Bengi. SKT has to run away somehow. They kept Goong and Pure alive there. That was such Whoa. a clutch steal from yeah. Najin. They really needed that. And now they got every advantage. They got the pick to set up the Baron, the Baron, the Inhibitor, and they were able to delay the fifth Dragon stack from SK Telecom. Najin coming up huge when it really matters. And SKT, again, I don't even think they should have contested that Baron, considering that Bengi was dead. Very unlikely that they were going to be able to steal it. And also, just the, if we watch this team fight right here, Najin, all of one mind, what turns around doing? immediately. He tries to one-shot Goon, but he simply doesn't have the damage. Duke hops over the pit, and the rest of SK Telecom just gets smashed into a wall. Najin immediately ready to turn. Much better shot calling than we've seen from Najin uh, in the first half of this season. Yeah. Wow, and SKT suddenly in a position I don't think they expected themselves to be in. Well, you know, Faker has tried for some all-ins this game. He just hasn't been able to produce the necessary kills yeah. after flashing to commit to some of these. I understood why he flashed right there. He thought if he could kill Goong instantly that they could turn it into a 4v4 and maybe take the team fight, but it's not going to work. Okay, well, OQ is all of a sudden a monster, too. He has the Bloodthirster. He's a core item up, and Bang has now been really stalled out. 
OQ's just been on a tear. Remember, he was 3-3-3 three, three, and three in the mid game. Now we come late game, and he has gone 4-0 and 1 since that time. Marin under the turret, but he's not going to be able to deal with OQ very yeah. well. Uh, OQ being as aggressive as he wants to be. Here comes Wolf. The rest of SK Telecom coming in as well, too. Actually, Marin's really tanky. I thought he was going to take more damage from OQ than that, but he is just nope. not. Doing okay. So they're just trying to stall out. They, somebody's going to have to go back and deal with the super minions in the mid lane. Naja not over committing to anything right here, just using the Bloodthirster and Lee Sin shields to get damage on the turret when they can. And how in the world does SK Telecom fight this? Their only chance is to take it to the super late game at this point. Okay, nice calling. Yeah, that's all right. Good dodge from Wolf, though. Still going to result in a tier two turret taken by Naja, it looks like. Yep, they will get it. So another take, so yep. Najin up about 6k gold now. Yep. That, that is going to be about the, the lead they need in order to overcome this victor. Fortunately for them, Faker has been really held down this game. He's only sitting at three items. His hex core is not complete yet. There were a lot of close fights early on between Faker and Goong, and Faker just kind of coming out a little bit on the losing end of those. Yeah, and that's really important here. Uh, it means that the AP damage isn't quite as significant from SK Telecom. So Mar or Duke rather can kind of go for a little bit more armor right now to help mitigate some of the damage from the Krogma. Finally, though, the Last Whisper is complete for Bang. That is a major step forward for them. A thorn mail for Duke, though. He'll be, he'll be able to do a little bit of return damage. And if you're SKT, what do you, what do, you do at this point? Just kind of wait? You yep. just gotta wait it out for the super late game, try to take yep. your fourth dragon, I guess. Get your get, try and farm up, get some more items onto your carries because you're down four turrets right now and just hope that they mess up at the Baron because they will take a lot of Baron damage here. And Duke getting tankier, but he's not a rock yet like Marin's on this Shen. Yeah. So we're gonna wait for the next Baron right now, Najin. We'll want to take this right at spawn. They have to accelerate this game, and they it would be great for them if they could take Baron and then chain it right into a dragon about 45 seconds later. Well, they've got a good opportunity to do that. Banshee's Veil finish for Marin. That's going to be a nice pickup to have going into this next fight. Uh, that's uh, okay. Crucible done for Wolf. So that's one less person who's going to get hit by an Annie stun, presumably. Another. Important grab right there. And what is Najin going to do? They're looking like they're going to recall right now. Probably don't want to do that just yet. They've got the waves all pushed in. Inhibitor respawned now for SKT. So they don't have to worry about the super minions anymore. Duke is going to attempt to take a blue buff. I don't think he's going to get that one. Run away from Shen. Yep. And then recall. So Duke has home guards. And his TP up. He could set up for a flank right here. Eight seconds until the Baron. Bengi and Wolf trying to invade and get some vision. Got to be careful, though. They can't chase too far in with the rest of Najin being kind of unknown to SKT until right now. And who's going to get this Baron? Okay. Oh, Bengi coming in. That's a big ult for him. He does land it. Faker coming from the side. A little bit of damage from that Death Ray, but no major follow-up for SKT. A single stun on a Bengi. Cullen comes down. He's pretty tanky, though, with that Shen ultimate. TP. Teleport used by Duke as well, too. They're going to catch him right away, though. Duke coming back in, pushed back by Wolf's ultimate. Beautiful monsoon right there. Yeah, so they need to keep Duke away. SKT thought they had a good chance to deal some nice poke damage right there. They didn't commit to it since Nar was in that bottom lane. Duke held the trigger on his TP until he could get into that Mega Nar. Now he's tired. So SK Telecom playing this out, playing the pressure game nicely so far. But remember, Pure still has Flash, Pure still has ults. So that's what they're going to be looking for. Marin leading the charge. They got the mid lane turret, too, during all that. Bang was able to take it yep. out, so at least they've got half the yep. turret set. Najin does now. Great play from Marin. He face-checked right there because they can't kill him, and or they were going to burn any ult on him, and that wouldn't have been preferable. Marin has a chance to recall right now with both his TP and his stand united to heal back up. So, Oh, Baron being blown up right now by Najin Empire. Ooh, SKT is going right down there. Fast. This is so risky by Najin. They have to disengage. A big three-man timber zone. And that is going to be a team fight win for Najin as they get two kills already. Duke, big ult to the back line. He goes Megan right before he gets too low to survive. A double kill for OQ already. 
Good by Marin. He's out of the fight and banging a lot of trouble too. As Oku what looks for a triple here, should be able to get it. Unofficial triple kill for Duke and nearly an ace for Nodge and the Empire. Pure landed a beautiful three-man tippers there. And you got to think that's going to be the game right there. And that's why the play before was so important with Marin face checking. You can't send three people into that brush yeah. versus an Annie whose ult is up. Just have Marin stop that. That's going to be the game for Najin. They're able to team fight their way through this. And despite some setbacks, some great delays on the Baron and the Dragon yield a lot of extra gold for them. I don't think, I don't know if they can end it right now. Oh. Okay, the second Nexus turret went down oh. much, much faster. Here comes Duke though, or Wolf. Wolf a bit low, pushes people away with the Monsoon. That's a double kill now for Marin, but the Nexus going down. Can they save it? Nexus really low, triple kill for Marin, but the Nexus still goes down. Only Duke remaining. It was a close call at the end there, but Najin played well enough all game to have the lead to get that little bit of damage in at the end. What a game one. Yeah, fantastic from <laughs> Najin. They really came up big. You have wow. to give them credit. Yeah. Uh, some misplayed team fights from SK Telecom. And that will be a win for Nanjin. Well, OQ 10, 4, and 5. OQ in that game. just went nuts towards Jeez. the end of that game. Oh, not the greatest game we've seen from Faker. He looked a little bit off today. Looked a little bit, looked a bit sloppy on that Victor, I gotta say. Yeah, his damage calculation, which is normally so precise on Victor, wasn't able to yield the kills that it needed to. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can say all you want about SKT really not needing to care about this game, but you don't want to see sloppy play like that. Yeah. Well, we'll see how game number two. Common Najin, Easy Hoon in the mid lane. Now, he's only lost one game so far this season. That was a defeat versus Samsung early on in the summer, but- uh, Where he got fizzed. That's right, but he, he hasn't played against a ton of tough opponents. Easy Hoon, obviously a great mid laner though, so. We'll see what he can do is Annie is our first ban. Yeah, I think that's smart. Take away the Annie. You know that Najin will pick it first round of the draft on red side. They have a pattern of doing that recently. Callista will be the follow-up ban from Najin. Now, where do you go here if you are SKT? Do, are we going to see as many jungler bans? Watch was the MVP of the game, even though they forced him onto the Lee Sin, and that wow. is actually going <laughs> to be banned. When's the last time you saw a Lee Sin target ban against Watch? It's been a while. It's been quite some it's time been... since I've seen any Lee Sin target bans, but yes, against Watch say, in particular. I was going to say years, maybe. But Lee Sin has been on the up and up in this scene in the last week. Ever since 514 dropped, we've seen a lot more Lee Sin. Elise banned, Rek'Sai banned, so we are going deep for the jungle picks again. Mm -hmm. So will it be a first pick Gragas, do you think? Or Evelyn, I would say that is likely. Oh, that's true. Now, yeah. is Najin going to let the rise through? Okay, that's going to be the big question. Mm -hmm. Najin loves to ban the rise. SK Telecom, they've had some wins on mid lane rise. Uh, let's see where they go with this. Now, Bengi did do very well in the early stages of the game on that Evelyn. They're going to ban the Janna. Hmm. I wonder why. So wow. it will be Azir first picked here. Yeah. Uh, with both Gragas and Evelyn up. Now the Rise, will that be coming through from Marin? Lucian may be a priority alongside the Gragas in this game. I'd say the Lucian is definitely a priority for uh, OQ right now, and he will get it along with the Gragas for Watch. It's so funny how fast Lucian has risen in priority here in Korea. Yeah. We saw, saw so much of it last week. Uh, and it was really OQ that started this. He now has above 70% win rate on Lucian this season. So Maybe the vein for Bang. But I would assume. I would assume the vein is going to come through. That is expected. Yeah, that is what they play when they play with Easy Hoon. Easy Hoon gets one of his best yep. champions and something that can peel for Vayne. That's that's the uh, the plan behind the Janna ban as well too. I suppose is to take away some of that peel. Will we see Goong go assassin this time? I would love to see his Ari again. Remember that historically he's always been a big Ari player, but we just haven't seen it recently. Faker playing Ari, uh, Mickey playing Ari this season, and Goong may try to do that, but we'll just go for the Victor yeah. instead. And we are going to see the Lucian Cannon lane again from oh, okay. Najin, unless that is flexed into top lane, but with Najin, you have to assume that Pure is going to be playing that just as a backup pick when he doesn't get the any. Why not get that big, hard CC engage potential from your support? 
I would imagine that's what we're going to see. And really waiting. Oh, are we actually going to oh, see the do Zed it. from Goon? That I would be so love awesome. love Goon Zed. He is one of the best Zed players we've seen. And there it is, Zed. Locked in for Goon up against that Azir from Izihun. Ooh, very exciting <laughs> to see this pick. No kidding. Wow. That's uh, Now with the change to the knockup on Azir's E, he has one less tool to deal with a Zed all in, which is an interesting change because he can't sort of CC Zed during the death mark without his ultimate. So what do you want to see against this Zed from SK Telecom? You know, the, the Alistar from Wolf would make a lot of sense. What are we going to see in the jungle, though? It'd be funny to see an Udyr that would just walk up and stun the Zed when he tried to get in. I, I can see that. But well, Evelyn's already there, so yeah. they're <laughs> they're not going to have that flexibility, unfortunately. Yeah, they nice. are going to take Rumble, which is another champion. They like to run Rumble Vein uh, for some more damage when they play Easy Hoon. Yeah, Alistar as well, too. So if if Wolf just sits on Easy Hoon, he can punt Zed out. He can knock him up when he comes in. He can't be targeted by Deathmark because he will yep. just use his ult. So there are a lot of there are a lot of advantages here. He can also break the cannon stun, which is going to be very important. So Goom, we'll have to see how well he does against the Azir uh, with this Zed. It's always been one of his staple champions, but we just don't see it from him very often. We have seen it from him this season. And what is that top pick going to be for Najin here? Maokai is available, and. I don't think that'd be too bad. Hold some people down, allow Kenan to get in there. Oh, Riven, yeah, do oh, it, wow. do it, Duke, <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, it's about as bloodthirsty as okay. it gets right here, guys. Well, this is gonna be a really snowball-y game. Either yeah. Najin is going to crush these lanes and smash SKT into the ground, or they're going to lose lane and have no way to defend against SK Telecom in team fights. Because I will tell you, this Najin composition with the deficit will just sputter in team fights. They are so squishy. Oh my. Well, it's a good 1 3 1. To be fair, it is a good 1 3 1 composition. You have disengage with the Kennen and the Gragas for the Lucian in the mid lane. And if you can split push with both Zed and Rivet, it's going to get crazy. But man, Thornmail counters this comp like nobody's business. If if they can, SK Telecom can get armor onto people, but they don't even have a good person to get Thornmail. Maybe yeah. ultra late game Evelyn. She can still get the Randuin's Omen and have a big effect. But Marin on that Rumble. Not the ideal pick, and we've seen the Riven picks into the Rumble in the top lane. Well, one thing's for sure, this game is not going to be boring. No, no it will not. <laughs> it's going to be really snowball-y one way or the other. I like it. SKT versus Najin Empire, and Najin, if they can 2-0, will put themselves in position to maybe move up in the rankings. Let's see if they can do it, guys. It's time to get in the game. Welcome once again to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom versus Najin EM Fire. SK Telecom. <laughs> SK Telecom with technically nothing to play for here, aside from pride and Najin once more. If they can win, if they can beat SKT, and then CJ loses to Samsung, Najin can move up to third place. They can lock that in today. Well, but that's a big ask yeah, for it, Samsung. It is a big ask, but Goon's back on Zed, and he, in his career, is 11 and 6 for a nearly 65% win rate on this champion. So yeah. it's long been one of his best, and we we think of him as an extremely skilled assassin player. Of course, the Zed, Ari, and LeBlanc. Well, no doubt that Najin is uh, certainly doing their part to position themselves as well as they can at the end of this season, but. You can also bet that if Najin wins against SKT, CJ is going to be playing their brains out to avoid losing to Samsung because they do not want to have to play an extra best of five to try to get to the finals. Well, uh, yeah, that is that is going to be very interesting, especially if, yeah, I mean, if they lose, they're going to be in a really horrible situation. That is for yeah. sure. I don't, I don't think they will, especially now that uh, if Najin wins, they'll have so much more to play for, but you got to wonder about it from SKT's standpoint, too. I mean, uh, 
CJ, Najin, both of these teams would be a bit of a challenge in the finals, but CJ perhaps a bit more of a threat. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see if Bengi can do work in the early game, because if he can somehow avoid this really messy situation, uh, and they're just going to give Duke the gromp right away. If, if he can avoid Goong and Duke going off here, then they could probably transition into a strong game, because there's no doubt that SK Telecom has a much, much stronger team fight. Yeah, wow, Pure taking a lot of damage early on. OQ comes down for a bit of poke on the Bang. There's a nice pulverize, actually. Exhaust use. Bang is going all in. They want to fight fire with Whoa. fire here, as Pure takes a lot of damage as well, too. Both, wow, two summoners used on the SKT side. I that think was, they wanted a bit more than that. That was really aggressive. Well, they're going to try and hit level two first, and then they can threaten Should. a headbutt pull all in from Wolf. Remember that as soon as they get level two, or actually, what did Wolf start? He started pulled. He started pulled. They were okay. That's why Najin was confused. They expected him to start heal. Yeah. And so now that he's level two, they can go for headbutt pull, and or a flash pull of headbutt. So this is actually turning this lane around quite a bit. That was actually a really smart trade by SK Telecom. Summoners worked out. Now they've got a lot of position in this lane. And look at this. OQ held to just three CS so far. Farming under turret now. This has been a really interesting trade, but I think that was really advantage of, in the advantage of SKT, and they caught Najin off guard, not it's, expecting that aggression early. It's not often when you see summoners used like that where the advantage actually ends up paying off. Yeah, I, I like it, though. I think in this particular circumstance, it's really messing up Najin, as you can see that OQ. Play on to EZU in the mid lane, and EZU no chance of getting out of that one. First blood going to watch. Wow, he was not prepared at all for watch to come in. Yep, and should have been. Three and a half yep. minute gank. <laughs> Double buff straight into gank. Very easy uh, play to be ready for. Easy Hoon has the exhaust in this game, but not too useful on that gank. And watch, to talk about watch, we don't really think about watch as a mechanical player, but remember about halfway into this season, the Gragas bands came in thick for Najin because that was kind of the only champion that Watch was showing up on, but he really does have good Gragas mechanics, and we saw that just a very well-played flash uh, E-gank there. Yeah. Oh, Goon. He's not going to die. He's got time. his flash. Taking a lot of damage, though. Yeah. Gets Doesn't out of that really one. Matter. Yeah, gets out of that one pretty easily. Always had that flash and knew that his shadow was coming off cooldown. No way for Easy Hoon to flash forward to respond and try and get that kill. So nice patient play, just pushing him out of lane. He's not going to care that much. Yeah. Probably was going to go back and recall anyway. It's a good thing that he didn't get that first blood gold. That could have caused even more problems for Easy Hoon, who has going into build triage mode with double Doran's rings. Yeah, you got to do something. Uh, pure poking so well with this cannon right now. And yeah, Wolf does have the uh, sustain, obviously, with the heal, but Pure has shown that he can do some serious work on this champion. Well, this is going to be a very difficult lane, obviously. I mean, Kennen Lucian is quite challenging for any lane to deal with, and you're putting a Vayne lane in there. Certainly Vayne Alistair is one of the stronger Vayne lanes uh, because you have kill pressure, uh, because you can set up a Pulverize into a Condemn relatively easily, and you have sustain, but not that great for trading, obviously, and when you have infinite shurikens, that does become problematic. Oh, Bengi finds Watch here. Vice versa, a little bit of damage in there with the hate spikes. But no dive opportunities. Now Bang's still slightly ahead of CS on OQ. And you go back to that early trade where the, the heal and the exhaust were used by SKT. And we're seeing just how much OQ and Pure came back. And so that shows us how important that trade was. Well, condemning against the wall for Pure, taking some damage. But there's a Pulverize. Ooh. Oh, he misses Pulverize, I think. Yeah, missed the combo. Oops. So Ignite will be used by Pure, and they chase him off. Still favorable, though, for SKT. And those early summoners, they got a CS lead out of it. The exhaust yeah. is back up. The heal will be back up soon. So I think that's just a big net win for SK Telecom. Well, we can see that they needed it. With how fast OQ and PR are coming back in this lane, imagine if they would be yeah. doing this without it being set back oh, no. so far. So. You, their turret would be getting hammered exactly, right now. Yeah. It's really a bad situation. So but they, they needed that just to stay even, basically, with this lane. Yeah. I like it, though. It's uh, creative. Yep. And those summoners are coming up right now. So did what it did what it should do. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Duke... Uh, not doing so hot on this Riven. Duke is, we don't really think of Duke as a Riven player. We didn't really no. discuss that. Duke has not played Riven this season. And he is getting bullied out here. 
Uh, Bengi coming in behind OQ here. They don't spot him yet. He's in the brush. They're going to try to make a plan to pure, I think. Both flashes are up. Watch coming down as well, too. Think you're coming from behind. This could get messy. Bengi starting the recall. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. Here we go. OQ checks the brush. Taking a lot of damage here. Can they finish him off? Not quite. Krog is not coming in, though. Condemning gets wall for pure. They pop that summoner heal to keep him alive, though. Yeah, didn't have to use Flash there, but I think Pure panicked a little bit. The Summoner Heal should have been enough to get him out, but they couldn't turn it around, and now Bang coming back. Here's Watch just preventing any kind of diving onto the turret and going to help out with the CS. Whoa, oh. meanwhile, Duke just gets 1v1 by Morin, who dies for the turret. <laughs> oh, it was so close. It was so close. Yeah. Congratulations on your first solo kill in lane, Duke, <laughs> with Riven. <laughs> you got many on other champions. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> was a bit awkward for Marin. A little bit, a little uh, bit. Maybe thought that he could get out of there with a flash, but the way the turret timing went down, even if he had flashed, the turret shot would have followed him. It was just kind of cooperation between top laners. It's like, all right, we could just sit here fighting each other for endless amounts of time, but you need gold, I need gold. I kill you under turret, I let your turret kill me. We both go home happy, you know? <laughs> we both get to buy things. Everybody wins. It's yeah. just a fast way to recall, really. Exactly, yeah. It's just uh, taking the death taxi, really. <laughs> yeah. Quick trip back to base. Death cab for Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not quite the implication I think that you were looking for there. That's, uh, <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> Well, makes you wonder what Marn might be able to do to Duke when he's not under his turret. Well, they have items now, so yeah. we'll see how it goes. Hex Drinker will be helpful for any all-ins that Duke tries to go for. But SK Telecom, they've had really strong vision control over this top side. They've basically been repeatedly creating rings of wards around Duke in the tri brush and even in the brush by the Krugs. So it's, there haven't really been options for Watch to come up and gank without being seen. And that's very important because Marn wants to play this lane pushed up. You know, and I, I go back to the last Riven game we saw in Champions, the one where, uh, where Someday got the pentakill, and he didn't have the strongest early game ever. I mean, he was down in kills a little bit here and there. It was a little bit of a slow start, but there was that one team fight where he got a few kills, and then the next team fight he got a pentakill, and then there's just no stopping this Riven. So, you're still kind of walking on a razor's edge, even if you do go sort of even with the Riven early on. Yeah. Yeah, you are. And as long as Marin can continue to shove the wave into the turret, Duke has to fight through these large minion waves in order to trade. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Marin wants to kill the Pink Ward. They've waited a oh long boy. time for this. Now, can they do something about it? Marin knows something's up, though. The, his spider sense is tingling right now, man. He's like, oh. I sense danger, I think. Do I sense danger? Oh, Yeah, flash. I sense danger. Flashes. Okay, he got out. Just in case. Oh, they tried to make a play right there. Marin ready. Oh, Watch yeah, spent so much time waiting in the Baron pit to make that play. And he chose to flash over because he wanted to I don't know, I think you I think you E flash R. Ooh, Whoa, nice job nice from flash Wolf. from OQ too. Yeah. Get out of that. But I think in that scenario, Doa, I think it's better to E flash ult because it just is faster once he can actually see you. Yeah, that's true. And you're gonna have that body oh. pull that back. There we uh -oh. go. There we go. The ultimate. Slows comes down. Duke in a lot of trouble. There's a nice knock up as well from Riven and Marin. Are they gonna finish him off? There's a shield. Watch coming in and a kill for Duke. And Watch a turret claims another victim. Oh, oh it does it? I really thought Marin was gonna be able to grab another one there. Wow. So barely escaping with his yeah. life on the return gank. Duke putting out enough damage. A dragon for SKT out of that. So they respond well after seeing Watch up in the top lane. Duke low health, but he's going to push that wave into turret for going back and buying. Can't believe Watch didn't die to the turret there. Yeah, really surprising. Pink Ward taken out by SKT. And Marin back to lane a little bit earlier, and he will be able to maintain a, a slight CS lead here. Easy Hoon, meanwhile, has been relatively left alone, more or less, after that early gank in the mid lane. Been able to more or less keep up on CS from Goon. I don't know why Goon has uh -oh. two Vamp Scepters. Uh-oh. What is he doing with the second one? Double Vamp Scepters, man. He's vamping out of control. Oops. Oh, Yato. <laughs> He's like, God's oh, going to die anyway. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. 
wah, wah. I hate it when you discover a ward with the Raptor buff right as it's about to die. You're like, oh, great. <laughs> that was a really efficient use of that. Then you have to use your lens afterwards. Yeah, feels terrible. It does. All right, well, watch is back for Pinked It anyway, even though it was about to die. Well, Easy Yoon should know this up. Goon uh -oh. going in. Uh -oh. That's a lot of damage. Easy no death mark. Like, All right. No death mark yet. Okay. Yeah, well, watch. Just a little bit, uh, I don't know. Do you think that was late on the draw there? Bengi was coming in, I guess. But. Well, they knew that there wasn't going to be a, be a flank coming from the top side yeah. of the river. Well, Watch is going to get seen by a, a ward here. I mean, Easy Yoon still has both of his summoners as well, too, so. Might have been able to get out anyway. I suppose. Some nice warding. They're going to see Watch's entire journey through the river and the jungle. A magical journey it is. Well, I guess not. That's not the right term for it now. An obvious journey. Yeah. Very apparent journey. All right. Well, Najin has a lead, but it's not significant. They didn't get the first dragon, which is something that they probably should have gotten based on the strength of their skirmish from their composition. They should have been able to make a pick and then, or have a successful gank and then go for the dragon. So SK Telegram still doing fine here. And with that stronger team fight, there has to be some sort of advantage that's taken. Easy in fact, has gotten more turret damage down. That's quite significant. And now, watch. Watch is, watch is uh -oh. deep behind uh -oh. enemy lines. Oh, Goong, death mark on Damarin to try to get away. He flashes, he goes back to his living shadow, takes some damage. Explosive cast comes in, Duke with another kill. Nice play by Watch there to lock up Bengi to give Riven another kill here. Really good teleport from Duke. Yeah. They locked that up instantly, and they baited them back oh, in oh. just long enough. Now Google will just go over the wall. Don't worry about it. I was worried for a second, but now <laughs> I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Great response from SKT. They move their duo lane into the mid, and now they have to deal with an Azir with almost no wave clear unless they want to all in with the ultimate oh, from Pure. Oh, oh, so close. Oh, Slicing Maelstrom comes in. Pure tries to make a play here. Easy is really low. He needs to be careful. Yeah, and OQ may show him why soon. Oh, boy. Well, Bang is there, too. Watch taking some decent damage. OQ coming in, trying to find an angle onto Easy Hoon. He can still burst him down very easily. Wow, so they didn't quite get the turret. Yeah. Marin oh. back up in the Hello. top side, trying to no 1v1 Duke. Uh, he probably could have. No, no equalizer. Okay. I mean, he... There is Hexdrinker's shield, too, so uh, okay. there is a lot to get through. All right, well, Duke loves turret hits. So, saves the mid lane turret, but for how long? Nice response from SKT. Just go ahead, push up the mid lane. See what you can do there, and if you can use that Azir advantage and try and push home the chip damage edge that you already had on those towers. So this is going to lock up Goon pretty convincingly. He really hasn't been able to get much work done on the mid in response. The Nashor's Tooth now done too, just a very nice item to have against the Zed for constant harassment. And Zed finally has some armor penetration in the form of that Brutalizer. Well, certainly help a little bit. Zed doesn't want to be the one with the assists. He wants to be the one with the kills. No such luck for Goon yet. Oh, OQ getting low. Yeah, OQ Gotta got be careful. hit by the blade active down in the bottom side. Yep. All right, so attempted a blue buff here. Huh. Thank you, ready to just smite that one away, but Duke is right there. He's going to need to be careful. Smite and then pop the W. Oh, doesn't get it. Watch back over the wall. Yep. Watch has the smite himself, so he will grab that one. Two blues on the side for Najin as Goong has his own. Important takeaway because Easy Hoon would like to just spam spells to kill this mid lane turret if he is able. Oh, Bang and Wolf getting some really nice damage done to this bottom tier one turret. No turrets taken yet in this game at all, actually, surprisingly enough. Yeah, some fights, but mostly those skirmishes. Yep. Oh, here we go. Explosive cask. Flash from Marin will prevent it from knocking him into the danger zone. No pun intended. Emperor's Divide used on the Goon. Comes back in. There's the exhaust. He's even taking less damage. The death mark not able to quite finish him off. It's a nice attempt from Goon, though. Indeed. Well, Easy Hoon has been, of course, the victim in this game in that Zed is your matchup. And then also just the constant ganking oh. pressure, but... Bengi uses the ult. They just want to keep the pressure off that turret, but here comes the teleport from Marin as well. Cancelled. 
as he stays up in the top lane, it looks like. They just want to keep that tier one and mid safe as much as they can. Oh, Bengi needs to be careful here. Yeah, watch doing a pretty significant amount of damage. Yes, Definitely not is. trivial. Maybe Whoa! Well, too. Speaking of damage, Bengi flashes out of the way of the body slam, and Watch has to flash over the wall in response. Here comes Easy Hoon. Not able to chase him for the kill, though. Kind of overshadowed by the fact that Duke got a solo kill in lane up and top. Meanwhile, some more action at the bottom. That turret getting very low as well. Yeah, they're going to. Bang and Wolf really want to play aggressively right now. They know where everyone wow. is on the map. Now the turret goes down in favor of SKT. Yeah, that's first turret of the game taken. Duke may be able to get top lane pretty soon here. Yeah, he has the damage to really deal some pretty nice turret hits. And let's take a look at what happened again. right there. So, a oh, pretty standard all in. Marin overheats at an unfortunate time. Oh, he doesn't actually overheat. He doesn't have any cooldowns available to use, and Duke just clean combo. It's okay. Overheating is a problem when you have the icy grip of death to cool you down. <laughs> Second dragon for SKT. So at least they get that. And they're still a little bit behind, but they're ahead in turrets, ahead in dragons. But the snowball has begun. Death mark in onto Bengi here, Good. doing a lot of damage. There's the exhaust. It's not going to save Bengi. He's going to get taken out. Watch coming in. Can't quite get there to make a play on a wolf. Chases him away with a barrel. If it were me, I would just turn and pick it up and then put it in my fridge. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'd be like, thanks, Gragas. I, I wouldn't refrigerate the red wine that he has oh. in his barrel. Well, you want it chilled maybe sometimes. No. I don't know. <laughs> no, all right. You don't like chilled wine. Well, no, I don't like chilled red wine. Oh, okay. We know it, it's purple when it comes out, so <laughs> not white wine. Oh, okay. Probably shouldn't be chilling that. Now, Probably the true. biker Gragas with the keg, oh yeah. The, oh yeah. The Gragas Esquire with the champagne, definitely. I'd, I'd chill that. that in a bathtub full of ice in a heartbeat. <laughs> Party. <laughs> Mid lane turret taken out, so Najin does even that up as well. Yeah. You'd think they'd have like a, a frat guy Gragas skin too. You know, if you've got a Broloff. Well, they sort of have that soccer hooligan Gragas. Oh yeah, that's true, I guess. But. It doesn't speak to me as someone who doesn't watch or enjoy <laughs> soccer. <laughs> That's true. Final outer turret taken by SKT. And Najin looking to equalize with the one in bottom lane. Should be able to Yeah, should be able to do it. Duke is becoming a big problem. Yes he is. So what is what are they going to do about Duke and Goon? Every each team has gotten kind of what they want to get here, which is presents a very interesting situation. SK Telecom is able to snowball off the dragon now. They have that stronger team fight, which will be helpful in securing future dragons. But Duke and Goong are fed. And that means that Nodge and Split Push will be quite potent. And what is the answer to that? Because Marin, though he has the Zonia's Hourglass, will just be waited out here by Duke, and he will melt. Oh, can they catch Goon? There's a chilling smite. They slow him down. A lot of damage from Easy coming in. They're going to get him after the death mark goes in. Slicing Maelstrom used to catch some of the SK Duke. Duke. Duke is here. Emperor Divide pushes him away, though. Bengi low. They managed to get the pick on the Goon, but they lost Bang in all of that as well, too. These matches have not been good for Bang's stellar KDA, have they? <laughs> they have not been good for uh. Bang's KDA. Uh, nothing really to for either team to take off of that. Duke simply returns to the top lane to continue his split pushing wades. Blade of the Rune King now done finally for Goon. Uh, he'll be oh, and there comes one of the patented OQ Cullings onto Easy Hoon, but Easy Hoon will pop out of that one pretty easily. And this fight again, it looks like Goon's getting caught out here. They have so many people, but Goon manages to pull up a death, death mark at the last second. Bang gets stunned wow. by the cannon. And look at Duke's flash right there, just right on top of Bang. Great use of his summoner spell to and continue the CC. Bang could have really avoided that. He literally just walked right on top of the slicing maelstrom there. And if he hadn't, probably could have tumbled away from Duke. Uh, it, it's really hard for him to deal damage, though, while the slicing maelstrom is down because Bang's range is so short. You'd think he'd want to do damage when the slicing maelstrom is down. Uh, I mean, down on the ground, zapping <laughs> oh, lightning okay, everywhere. Right, I see. <laughs> yes, you are correct. When it is a... being used, let me amend my statement <laughs> as it was unclear. We need a proper definition for down. Yes. Yeah. Always a problem. Down, up. Who knows what these things mean anymore? I don't know. Down, under. We don't have Papa Smith here to help <laughs> us understand that one, though. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, well, bang in the split push situation. He has a blade. I don't think he can duel, though. Maybe he can against Zed. 
The Riven is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, nobody's dueling against the Riven at this point. So, one for one trade. Najin has a nice lead. It's still going to be tough for them. They need to break this up into skirmishes, but Gragas is really the perfect champion for this composition, as is Kennen. Because yeah. even if Kennen doesn't hit the Slicing Maelstrom, as long as he splits up people for Duke and Goom to 1v1, he's done his job. The stun is kind of icing on the cake when you just want to disrupt and create skirmishes. And L Lucian, no slouch in that skirmishing either. Single target damage uh, with his passive can get quite high. Yeah. So interesting team comp from Najin, very execution heavy. And when it comes to the late game team fighting, it is going to be about whether Pure and Watch can split up the members of SKT. Because if SKT stays together as a unit, it's gonna be really hard to take them out. Yeah, that's really gonna be the key going forward is SKT's gonna need to have some very, very tight late game team fighting. And guess who doesn't usually have very tight late game team fighting? Uh, S SKT, really. Yeah. yeah. It's a big test for them, I think. Yep. Definitely is. And the thing is, we're not used to Najin being so tight themselves in the late game <laughs> as well, too. This is kind of a, a new, new thing for them. Yeah, this is certainly interesting oh, new hi, ground. Goon. Goon gets caught completely. Can he escape? Flashes, gets over the wall. Yeah, couldn't quite get the shadow over the wall, so yeah. had to use his flash in addition to that ability. So, eh, you know, SKG gets something out of that. It's well, definitely they, a bonus right as this dragon comes up. Yeah, but I was going to say, they're going to get a good position over the dragon right now, which is pretty crucial since they'd be up 3-0 if they can get it. Yeah, huge for them. This dragon. The dragon that they couldn't secure in the uh, last game, and they are going to set up a pick. They're going to try anyway. Easy now, just pushing forward, waiting for this dragon to spawn, seeing if anybody will face check a brush because the... Evelyn and Alistair will be able to lock it down. No vision, just oh. a brush check right there. They are going to not see Eve. They will see everybody else. Pinkboard goes in. Yep. SK and Telecom, start immediately. Yeah, why not start that dragon? We'll see if Duke is able to get back lines. Man, that dragon is dying fast. That's an easy third dragon for SKT. Now, they were in this position last game, they and it was indeed. looking good. How does Najin come in and fight these objectives? It is challenging. They're not split pushing Whoa, right now. That does that seem a bit preemptive to you? To use that explosive cask right there just to push Marn away? Yeah, that was... Especially when uh, Baron is a bit of a threat as well, too, or at least the, the bait of Baron. Yeah, that's... We'll see. I mean, it's a short cooldown ability, so it's definitely not the worst thing in the world, but probably a little bit too... too aggressive with that ability, popping it out too quickly. Well, Duke is absolutely huge right now. Even has the distortion boots because he's going to need those to get into the back line with the flash. Right. Not going for any kind of home guard engage. Interesting. I think I like that better, actually. The home guard? No, no, the, the distortion. distortion. Well, I mean, you need that flash up to get onto easy and to get onto bang. It, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I think it actually is slightly more important to have that. You have enough dashes anyway, and yeah. it's not about speed getting into the back line on Riven. Now, the tricky part is that there's not a lot of wards, really, for Najin where he can come in from behind. Culling use doesn't really do a whole lot. Yeah, Uki doesn't have the most damage yet, not like last game where he was just going off in the late game. And interestingly, SKT is actually getting a split push advantage here. This probably should not be happening. No one's going to answer Marin in the top lane. I Duke all the way in bottom. So, yeah. Somebody has to go back and deal with that. It will be Zed. And this should be the setup for Najin, the 1 3 1. No dragon, so that means Goong should be in the top side because he can get to Baron faster and use your teleport in the bottom lane. Uh, this is the proper setup for this point in time under these circumstances. I thought they maybe had an opportunity on the watch, but couldn't quite connect with anything. He's even trying to steal raptors. You know, birds are like that. <laughs> yep. Birds killing birds. Yep. Okay. Now Najin going to move into the river. We'll see a slow push develop in the top lane for Najin, but kind of strange that they don't want to actually go for that three lane pressure yet. Instead, Duke's gonna return to mid, stand on a ward and start recalling. I don't know what Najin's doing right now. They need to really commit to this. 
There's no reason why we can't have the Riven in the bottom. I think Duke absolutely should upgrade his Trinket Ward to an upgraded Ward Totem and start providing vision for himself so he's not so scared to be in the bottom lane. And Ajin suddenly is looking a little bit indecisive about what they think they need to get done right now. They have to commit to this. They can't They can't just keep stalling this game out because that actually really does play into SK Telecom's hands as long as Najin doesn't get a big pick. Obviously, at any point in this game, it could turn around by Najin getting a pick, using the crowd control from Kennen to eliminate one member of SKT and then taking a Baron, but... As long as SKT plays a tight vision game, that shouldn't happen. And oh, uh, they know where Goong is. Yeah, I see him with the Wolf Spirit. Najin really falling behind when it comes to warding. Okay. Hmm. Duke's back up with his All team. Right. Really should not Whoa, be there. Have they caught Goong here? Goong, there's the Agony's Embrace. Goong in a little bit of trouble. He has no flash right now. And if they get hit, this could be a Baron death mark used. Not going to make a difference. Bang gets the kill. Najin is right there. Bang very low. Slicing Maelstrom. Oh, Oku comes in. Can he get Bang with the culling? Not oh, he does get him. But the rest of the fight is happening. Now Duke able to take out Bangy Wolf. Re-engages. Can Izuyun make a play? Emperor's Divide. A lot of damage coming in from Mart as well, too. Everyone's so low, but the Riven Shield, not enough. Double kill, triple kill from Easy Hoon, and you're in a lot of trouble as well. The victory flashes as a quadra kill comes in for Easy Hoon, and that will be most likely a Baron for SK Telecom. Yeah, and that's the difference right there. You have yep. all the AoE from SKT. There's, it's so hard for them to fight that. Going to be a tricky Baron here, can considering how low everyone is. Yeah, they can I do it. I don't know, man. They can do it. They can tank it with Easy Hoon. It's fine. All right. Uh, you sure? Yeah, they have scrap uh, shield. They have scrap shield. You sure? Yep. You absolutely sure? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Okay. They can. <laughs> All right. Well, it's okay. The support died. We don't care about that. But. Yeah. He'll be back up in 30 seconds. No <laughs> one really cares. So the start of that fight, catching out, catching out Zed, so crucial, and Bang had to go on the run. So let's take a look at this one again. So yeah. Goong is going to die early, and now Naja just has almost no chance of actually winning this fight. Of course, Bang will be chased out by Pure. And Bang is actually going to die to minions here. Watch this. Cannon, Cannon minion. minion. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Headshot. And, but at this point, you just can't win this 4v4. All the AoE is still there. The Azir and the Rumble Dude, are still alive. That Emperor's Easy Divide. Hoon played that really nicely. Just zoned him out when they try and re-engage. Easy Hoon won that fight. Yeah. Unquestionably, yep. Easy Hoon won that fight. Hold the Emperor's Divide. Wait till they try and turn on yep. you. Bounce him back and then crush him. You know, one thing we actually didn't talk about is the fact that Easy Hoon is in and Faker is not means that someday wins a regular season MVP. Well, because Faker's got no chance it, of. Uh, it, it depends. He, he could, could tie, tie him it. Okay, I guess game. he could tie it. Yeah, but he can't outright win it anymore at this point. And Najin may not be able to. By SKT, Dragon is up. They've got a great position on it. And this is fourth Dragon, guys. And we know how fast they can kill it. And there's nobody there for the insane steal yeah. like we saw last time. And Najin, frankly, they just misplayed the split pushing on this. They didn't push the advantage that they had when it came to the 1v1s. They were overly concerned about trying to get vision over Baron when, I mean, Pure could have just st stood there and continually put wards into the pit, but they didn't apply pressure with their advantage. They had to use the Zed and the Riven better. Yeah. It was weird. I mean, uh, they were looking so strong in the early game. This game is almost like a throwback to a Najin from earlier this season where they do get that big advantage in the early game, but then they sort of start to meander around and don't seem to really know what to do with it. Yeah, they definitely had a difficult time playing this one out. They can still win this game. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even though the Baron has been taken by SKT and we see these Tier 2s starting to fall, but look at how well SKT is warding now. It's much more difficult for Najin to get the kind of pick that they need to start to turn this game. So as long as SKT continues to control their flanks and make sure they group up at, uh, as a unit when they rotate, Najin will never have a chance, really. Well, Marin trying to control the flank right now, chasing Goong away. A little bit of roasted ninjas on the menu for Marin. Oh, Dante's good. Whoa, nice what job. a play. Easy Hoon knocked right into Slicing Maelstrom. There's a kill for Duke already. Watch getting a bit uh -oh. low, but Bang in a bit of trouble. Needs to be careful. Nice equalizer, though. All oh. over Najin. Marin going in. Backs off at the last minute. Knew that calling was coming. 
And it was all a clever ruse to get the turret, sacrificing the bird for the tier two. Yeah, wow. Uh, it was uh, very nearly a dangerous situation for SKT. It was. I like that Najin tried to make that play. I like that they made the attempt because they saw Goon was zoned out, but some of the AOE was gone and out of that lane from SK Telecom. So you want to take those small skirmishes. They found an opportunity to get Easy Hood into the tower with his flash down, and they took it. Yeah. Another kill for Duke. He is a nightmare. He is still large, but is he in charge? <laughs> He's not in I charge. I don't think so, yeah. He has. He had the chance to be in charge. He still could be in charge. He well, is seven and two, and he has his TP, but he does not choose to be in charge. He's trying to be in charge. Uh, looks like uh -oh. the duo uh -oh. wants uh -oh. to take him out. Alstar's got him zoned up. There's a pulverize waiting for that headbutt. Duke coming in. There's the exhaust. Duke hopping over to the minion waves. It looks like he'll be able to get away. And uses that uh, broken wings to escape. SK Telecom can't find the pick. Crushed dreams and broken wings. That's right. Okay. Oh, well, nice job. On that destroyed. was a beautiful outplay. Zonia's as OQ comes in. Bengi there as well. There's a double kill for the Oh. Hoon. Dude comes in, though. Hoon gets the double kills true. Easy Hoon, rather. The original Hoon. Wolf in a little bit of trouble here. Duke's still a big threat. Bengi there as well. They're chasing him away because they know Bang is coming. They know Marin is there. Watch gets caught. That's another kill for SKT. Bengi gets that one. Uh -oh. Pure and Duke on the run. Scrying Orb will help them find Pure. Duke comes back in. Bengi flashes over the wall to try to escape. Wolf is still there. No mana left, really, though. Duke hopping into the Baron pit. <laughs> it's Operation Get Duke. He's just going to teleport back to the Goodbye. turret up by the inhibitor. Yeah, Bang tried to, try to get in there. But man, Easy Hoon outplayed that death mark. So remember that the changes to death mark were one out. second. So he knows he's coming in behind. Look at the yep. timing on that Emperor's Divide. Turns it around so his, his soldiers to his old shadow. What a beautiful Azir play from Easy Hood. The fact that he gets the double off of this is just icing on the cake. But talk about knowing how to play Azir into Zed. Seriously. They were ready. And I mean, if you're going to play against Najin, you need to be ready for Goom's Zed. And of course, catching watch at the end there. And then they try to make a plan here. It doesn't work out. And we don't get to see the rest of the replay anyway, so it's okay. OQ. Recalling in a brush. That's what we get to see instead, though. Oh, yeah. I was hoping we'd get to see OQ recall in a brush. All right. Well, SK Telecom not letting any of these objectives go like they did in the last game. And it is playing out much more to script for them when it comes to compositional advantages. Uh, Dobjin's going to have to find a pick in the next minute 30, or they're going to have to all in on dragon number five because that, or maybe they can get lucky and try and trade it for a Baron. We'll see. Baron and Dragon coming up pretty, uh, at a pretty similar time here. Now, if you're SK Telecom, I would imagine you prioritize that Dragon. The fifth Dragon stack would be pretty big in the team fights. It helps you take that Baron. Not so much the same the other way around. Yeah. Uh, Even though the Baron is coming up a little bit earlier. I think they'll just ward up the Baron, send Vayne over to solo the Dragon at the appropriate time. Usually that's the call you see in this particular situation, but that is a little bit more of a dangerous call because uh, Duke is huge and can easily 1v1 the Vayne. Yep. Last KT. Oh. Maybe a flank coming in here from Bengi on the top. He's got the opportunity. Nice equalizer. Goog in a little bit of trouble again. Sykes and Maelstrom comes in, push back with that condemn. Duke on the outside of the fight, already very low as Bang chases him down for the kill. And SKT has got this one. Here goes down as well, too. And now the grand chase. There goes watch a double kill for Bang as they try to go in onto OQ. OQ turns and try to get him with the burst. Can he do it? No. Marin comes in. For yet another one, Goong, the slippery ninja that he is, is able to escape. And SKT decides they don't need the dragon. They don't need the Baron. They just want that inhibitor. Yep, going forward for the inhib. And that's what happens in the 5v5. Bang played that fight so well. Instant condemn, buffered onto the cannon as he came in, nullified him from that fight. And then he found 
The oh, they're going for it. Oh yeah, they Goon should coming go. in. He gets Ooh. bang. I don't know about this. They're going to take out Goon. But uh, they still have a zero. They'll, they'll get uh, the win. OQ up in 14. It looks like that will be enough time. Pure is there. Doesn't have his slicing Maelstrom for any sort of delay. And as the Nexus gets taken out, Watch will make one last effort. Comes in, gets pushed out with the Emperor's Divide, and there goes the Nexus. SKT ties it up. Easy Hoon played really well that game. Yes, he did. After that yes, early did. death. He came back and made some absolutely massive plays on this Azir. We know him as one of the best Azir players in the world, and he just showed us why. Yep. Absolutely. Well, that, that Zed out play alone. Man, you want to talk about the Zubu that was super sick. plays right there. That was, <laughs> yeah. that was sick. Yep. What good is a ninja when you know exactly where he's going to be all the time? <laughs> okay. That ninja, that, that was one of the few times where Zed is more obvious than Shen. And Najib. They showed us something very different. They, they got a good early game lead, but you, you just have to commit to the split push there. You cannot fight SK Telecom when they have that kind of team fighting advantage. Just having the Zed get caught out so many times and the Riven afraid to put pressure onto the tier twos was, was a major factor. That was part of it. I mean, Goon did get himself caught a few times. Is he any ban again, as uh, we have come to expect against pure Callista, of course, banned out as well. Okay. So, Rek'Sai, same ban so far from last game on the blue side from SK Telecom. We'll see if they want to take away the Lee Sin again. Probably not. I would think that that is not the most relevant pick. Vayne will be ah, denied. okay. One of the very few times we've seen Najin ban Vayne because yeah. OQ is a huge fan of playing Vayne. Well, right now, Lucian is really his bread and butter. So, if they can keep the Vayne away from Bang, if they can get the Lucian for OQ, they're still in good shape. So what does is, what is SKT do if they can't go for that type of composition? I wonder. There's a TF ban. Okay. Uh, Goong is an old TF player. That's yeah. not too surprising. Uh, and especially when we have that red side, Elise will be the final ban. Azir first pick. Two games in a row on blue side by SK Telecom. They're going to give away the Lucian and the Gragas. I would assume we're going to see the same picks from Najin yeah, in well. that regard. I mean, if you're not afraid of the Zed after last game, you're not going to be afraid to pick that Azir. But what does Najin respond with? Yeah, I, I, I think it's just stick to Lucian and Gragas. These were picks that worked for you in the last game. You're going to make changes in your solo lanes. Goon can always go back to playing Victor if he needs to. Very true. I totally agree. I mean, it, it, it wasn't really the picks that were the problem for Najin. It was what they did with them yes. later in the game. Yes. And Goon getting caught. Yeah. So Watch on Gragas, obviously good. OQ on Lucian, obviously really good. And beyond that, like you said, change it up to maybe more of a team fighting oriented composition rather than that heavy, heavy skirmish comp. But they're going to oh. change it. Eve Alistar will be the pickups taking those away from Bengi and Wolf. Okay. So they don't want to run the. They don't want to run the cannon anymore with the Alistar up because Wolf was able to carve through a lot of those slicing maelstroms and. Bengi, making Bengi faces as he usually does in the draft. Huh. And so the Gragas may go over this time to Bengi, and they will take away the Eve, which Bengi has used in back-to-back -back games. Man, if Bengi ever has, like, a stream or something like that where you can use emotes, I think there's, like, an infinite amount of possibilities <laughs> for him to use. Various Bengi faces. <laughs> he does have some very nice faces. Yeah. And oh, it will be the Lucian takeaway. So SK Telecom has not used Lucian in a very long time. Interesting. This game has been, this draft has been much more about denying the enemy team preferred picks that they've been using throughout this series than it has been about necessarily getting picks that you feel very strong on. We know Bang's yeah. a, a fine Lucian player. That's not a concern. But with the Vayne band out and the Lucian gone, it's smart. Where does OQ go right now? He wants to bully his lane with the Lucian, or he wants to scale into the late game on the Vayne and show off those mechanics. He out now has neither of those options. Will he go back to Sivir? Could be a possibility. Yeah, I mean, for those of you who may have forgotten to, Bang nearly single-handedly carried SKT to the finals last season with Lucian, and it was very, very impressive. We've seen some Caitlyn here and there in China, but we haven't seen Caitlyn in OGM forever. Yeah, Uzi's been playing Caitlyn recently in yeah. OMG's playoff matches, and it has, I mean, but it's Uzi, who is an excellent Caitlyn player, one of the best in the world, for sure. Yep. And the Victor, a more stable pick, could go for Victor Kogma here. Kogma, not one of OQ's 
top champions, but also something that he's not going to get rocked in lane with against the Lucian. Obviously, much more dangerous to play Sivir. This is kind of Najin admitting defeat that they're just not even putting Okyo on a champion that he can dominate in lane with? Uh, I mean, he can do better in lane with, but what is he going to pick here is the problem. True. Maybe he goes for... I mean, maybe he goes for Caitlyn, and they try for some sort of long-range poke lane against Lucian. They could go for Janna or Nami, maybe. But it's... I think you just take the Kog'Maw, which has more of a laning presence, but also has more damage in the late game. I kind of like the Thresh better than the Kennen here, just because Gragas Kennen can be a little bit of anti-synergy sometimes, unless yeah. you're bouncing somebody into the Slicing Maelstrom. I agree with you. We'll see, though. Okay. Maokai will be per picked for the first time in this series, was banned in game one, but fell all the way through the draft in game number two. So the combination of Maokai, Thresh, and Gragas means there's a very high pick potential here. Thresh and Maokai. So I assume Najin would go for Shen. Yeah, Shen, Shen makes sense. You've got the Evelyn. Uh, they were able to use that to do well, and there it is. You know, this is almost identical to the composition that SK Telecom used in game number one of this series, which yeah. they lost. Uh, the only difference is that there is an Alistair instead of a Janna. Hmm. So I mean, Najin going to try and use SK Telecom's composition against them, but actually pull out the win this time. Very curious, very curious that, that Najin would be trying this, but Watch has had a long, long series of success and victories on Evelyn, spanning his entire career. It's been one of his better champions overall, yeah. and now they're playing more for the late game team fighting. Uh, switching up their strategy off of a 1-3-1 one, one split push now to pretty standard composition these days. Both teams standard comps for the most part from what we see here in, Goril in Korea. Uh, SK Telecom, they have a, a bit more advantage when it comes to creating picks. And Najin, of course, with the double globals on Shen, maybe a little bit of advantage in terms of skirmishing. More late game damage on Najin in this one because they have the Kog'Maw instead of the, the Lucian. Whereas Azir and Victor I, are both late game monsters. I like it. I feel like this not this puts Naj in a more comfortable position in the late game and maybe will help them make a bit better decisions than they did in game number two. We'll see if they can get any sort of lead though, as SKT has a pretty strong early game. This is it, Najin in a must-win situation to move up in the rankings. Let's see if they can do it. Time to get in the game. It is time. Game number three, Notch and EM Fire versus SK Telecom T1. Apparently doesn't get a cheer this game. <laughs> so it's a bit odd. Oh, all right. Somebody, somebody started it. All right. <laughs> I was tempted to lead it there, but I can't show bias. You know me. Objective, unbiased SK Telecom fan. That's, that's what I am. <laughs> that's what I have always strived to be in my professional casting career, Monte Cristo. Well, you're making it work. That's right, and you are a completely unbiased <laughs> KT fan. I understand that, and I, I appreciate it. It's okay. I appreciate your level of maturity. I'm just perpetually disappointed. <laughs> what can I say, Noah? <laughs> it's a, a certain amount of melancholy that all <laughs> KT fans have. Well, hey, maybe you can live vicariously through Ryu if H2K <laughs> gets to Worlds. Who knows? <laughs> Well, hopefully KT can make it. They're certainly in a decent position to do so. I mean, to be fair, this is the best KT team we've seen since 2013 when they came close. What they won a season. Time. Yeah, but are you really going to say that that KT Arrows team was better than this KT team? Mm, Come no. on. No. See, I thought so. <laughs> I thought so. Said by Monte Cristo many times, Arrows were the worst team to ever win a season of champions. They were. <laughs> I can't deny. Okay. Well, uh, Maokai sapling start here for the Hoon. And SK Telecom just sitting up in the tri brush. No invasion. Simple start in a 2v2 lane. We'll see how this gets played out. Early invade from the Thresh. Oh, wow. Wow, they're, they're, going, they're going nuts here. Uh, apparently, yeah. Uh, I don't know about this. You're going to get flanked by the Alistair. Oh, boy. And there's a flash immediately used for Bang. Good luck, Wolf. See you later, man. <laughs> See you on the other side. Well, oh, is he actually going to make it out? Well, he wow. flat. 
No summoners used the by uh, Wolf there. Bang had to flash the pole. Yeah. So he knew that he was probably going to make it out. There wasn't any more CC hmm. coming through. I suppose the they... exhaust was also used. Yeah. That was a bit awkward, but... Uh... Oh, they thought they were getting cute. They didn't realize that what happened there was Pure was in the bottom lane brush waiting to freeze yeah. in case Bang and Wolf swapped into the top lane. So they huh. instantly had that advantage coming in from the flank. And now, OQ only has a 25% win rate on this Kog'Maw, and I mean, it's really not his kind of champion, so I suppose to a certain extent that's not terribly surprising. Yeah, a little bit surprising. Not terribly surprising, though. Yeah, it's definitely not been OQ's champion. He just thrives on champions that have more mobility, because it, what OQ's strength as a player is... Oh, hello. Gragas. Oh, oh. Finds Watch in the jungle here, and they're going to trade a few blows here. Oh, we're not sure. Watch can't be here. Oh, yeah, Watch has to burn that flash. I think he'd taken a couple hate spikes, but getting the better end of that trade, that's for well, sure. Well, Easy Hoon and Marin are pushed up, so there's really no way that Watch can play around this red buff right now. Yeah, they're going to take the red buff, in fact. That's a very smart invade from yep. Bengi. Uh, no way that Shen and Victor, who will lose the wave clear battle to Maokai, and Azir can push that forward. So Bengi, as he knows that they started the blue buff, uh, gets over in time to harass at the red. So it looks like the three buff coming through. Bengi just cleared his blue side of the jungle and walked into the red. Very, it was a smart play. And starting on that side of the map too, so good. That was a pre-planned plan play. So what SK Telecom was doing because they were looking at the lane oh, matchups. Pulverize, nice headbutt. Wolf goes back in, has to burn that flash, is watching OQ chase him down. Uh -oh. This could be first blood, this will be first blood, and it's gonna go to OQ. Yep, smart play from Watch. Ganking that bottom side while they're pushed up. No, no pink wards to see him coming in, and an overcommitment from SK Telecom when they already were down a summoner in that bottom lane. Mm. Everything that Maokai sees Gragas' wooden barrels and goes, what did you do to my friends? <laughs> yeah. He's using the corpses of Maokai's friends to store his alcohol. I know. That is, that is evil. Man. Wow, this got really dark really fast <laughs> there. Also, uh, Victor hates Maokai because he's primitive. Ah, I see. You know, yeah, I would too. Why would, you, why would you want a walking tree when you can just build a robot? Seriously. You could make a robot that looked like a tree, but that'd be kind of lame. <laughs> Treebot 1.0. <laughs> Reminds me of an episode of Futurama where all the robots are made out of wood. <laughs> okay. Stylish. Well, this bot lane, pretty, pretty much going for SKT at this point. Nice little CS lead. Ah, but Watch coming in there. Knock up onto Wolf. They're going to try it again. Wolf plays away. Here comes Bengi. Can he make a play? You're getting a bit low. No level six for a while, though. Oh, nice grab onto Watch here. Watch throwing those hate spikes down, though. Bang. Still a lot of health remaining. He's going to go in, get one kill. A kill, though, for OQ as well, too. Nice headbutt pulverize. Bang. Bengi in a lot of trouble. There's a double kill for OQ now. Decides to leave it at that. No sense over pursuing Bang there. Wow, two oh. more kills onto the Kog'Maw in this laning phase. SK Telecom really suffering from a lack of summoner spells in this particular situation. Yeah. Now, they, they played that pretty well. Bengi did a good job of body blocking, but they just needed to get out of there once Wolf died, not continue trading. And look at Pure, he's on the backside of the turret right now. Bang has to be very careful about how he plays this one out, but they can't push it forward any further with a short Death timers, meaning that this Thresh already gets back into lane. He also is going to delay the recall from Pure. Hmm. They may be able to take a Dragon right now, actually, depending on how they want to play this. With the recall delay onto Pure and the fact that they already have some vision there, as well as Easy Hoon doing very well in the mid lane. Yeah, they could. He's already 11 CS up onto Goon right now. Not going to do it. Just going to put down some vision instead. All right. Sorry. And Ajin, though, has done a really good job of abusing that lack of flash, especially for Wolf. And the uh, Goose just keeps getting poked out. He's low in mana, can't quite stick with it in this mid lane. And Easy Hoon, not going to get too much damage on this turret because Watch It will be there to cover. Mm -hmm. What do you think those hate spikes are made out of exactly? Hatred. Spikes of pure hate? 
Why do they come out of the ground, though? Why don't you just shoot them at people? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I guess it has to be attached to Evelyn in some way. Is it, though? Is it? Attached to her feet? I don't know. Why would you shoot spikes under the ground out of your feet? You're not a lurker. Maybe you she's a fan of Vlad the Impaler. Maybe. Evelyn just likes impaling. Just like Vlad did. Vlad didn't have to impale those people. He just enjoyed it. He could have killed them any number of ways, but he chose to impale them. You know, sometimes you're just looking for a little bit of extra challenge in life. <laughs> and that's how you well, do it. Yeah, you have to show off your style through the way that you hate people, though. I, I guess. That's what I learned from Evelyn. Spikes of hate. <laughs> I feel enriched. Thank you. Oh, Oku has bounced back very nicely in this lane despite being pushed in early. Bang is in a very bad place in terms of his build. Pickaxe into Avarice Blade. That is not going to do well against the Trinity Force Kog'Ma. Not really. Are we going to see a dive here? I wonder. Watch could come in. Uh, Victor can't really answer this is the problem. And Duke has been underneath his turret for a lot of this time. They could try a stand unite, but they will lose top tower if that happens. Yep. Uh-oh, Watch is in trouble. Yes, he is. Yeah, gets caught. Nice play. Nice body slam. Watch is going to get taken out. Oh, Shen Ultimate comes in. I spoke too soon. Nice explosive cast, though. Watch still in trouble. Body blocking the culling. Watch Marin getting stopped away the Shen Ult. somehow. Marin stopped the Shen Ult in he the did. top lane. Here the comes Victor. Marin very, very low here. Easy and coming down, laying down the damage. OQ in a lot of trouble. There's a kill for Thresh. Now they're going to bounce Goon around over the wall. Another kill comes in. For easy hoon via those sand soldiers, watch will recall, and it's gonna be a dragon for SKT, it looks like. Marin is the real hero of that fight because that Shenult was so close to going through, and if Duke shows up in that bottom side, that fight goes very differently. Marin actually tower dove him underneath the tier one and barely escaped with his life. Worth as it. Duke tried to ca just run him down and it does come at a price. Obviously, that TP having to be used by Marin to catch this wave in the top lane. But Duke is going to have that Stand United back up far sooner than Marin. Hey, with the Dragon down, though, I mean, the TP yep. not quite as important. Could see another dive. I mean, there's, there's such a huge dive threat. You have the Alistair, who will be immune to the turret damage, and then the big shield onto Evelyn. But yes, Duke got stopped by Marin. Great heads up play from the SK Telecom top laner because we watched this coming through and Marin's just gonna twist in advance on him. Not a great place to teleport, but certainly an important stop. Nonetheless, Pink Ward already in this brush and OQ keeps on trying to shoot over the top. He knows he has a damage advantage. Bang is low wow. on mana. What a grab onto OQ. Yeah, and Goon gets here, but they're fighting in a choke and guess who's pretty good at chokes? It's his ear. Just puts him right in his place. Goon gets taken out in the end. Yeah, a little bit obvious from Duke there. He's standing so close to the turret, it was a pretty easy stop from Marin. Well, back to a small sense of normality. OQ is still very scary, though, with that 4-1-1 Kog'Ma. The only info he's going to convey is that you're going to take a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the trade went well for SK Telecom. It brought them back very even in terms of gold, but that's, they shouldn't have, they fell behind so early on in the first place that these towers are so important now. They have to win this turret battle to feel comfortable in the late game against Najin because this Fed Kog'Ma is rolling now. And here we go. Oh, nice dodge. Great dodge from Bang. Headbutt attempted, but Pulverize attempted. Watch was uh, right there as well too. Ah, they, they spotted saw. him. Yep. Poked his head out of that brush for a moment, and that was all it took. Calling use, but doesn't really do it a ton. Oh, Easy Hoon getting a lot of damage onto this turret now. Yeah, this is how they would need this lane to go. Yeah. Uh, Easy Hoon matching when it comes to kills and assists, but has the CS advantage, has the pressure advantage, and here we go. Easy Hoon coming up to the top side, yeah, too. Duke's got his flash, but can he get away here? There's a head, there's a. Oh, the explosive cask. A little bit mispositioned, and that's going to propel Duke to safety. Well, got the flash down. You still have reliable kill pressure when it comes to the top side with the Gragas Malkai combination enough CC there. So maybe you go ahead and make another visit once the explosive cask is back up. 
Meanwhile, Victor gets some nice free farming and a chance to move down into the bottom side, but they're still going to be very wary about diving this. Look at Mar Marin right now. He's just sitting in tri brush. I think he's trying to see if there was a dive coming in and he was going to go under tower and interrupt again. Well, looks like that tier one in bot yep. lane oh, is going to be Marin. taken. Yep, they're going to come in. Shen ulting in easy and in a lot of trouble. Gets blown up immediately. They take a turret at the same time. Yeah, Ezeun just had no chance there. Yeah, huge kill. But without Shen, Marin will be able to kill the top lane turret, so they trade one tower for one tower just to kill on an Ezeun. And Marin didn't know to interrupt that because he couldn't see Shen, and Shen was ulting onto an invisible target. So yep. there was a smart gank from Najin. The same thing unlikely to happen again because there wasn't enough forewarning there. Uh, watch, or Marin needs to be careful here. Watch coming up. Yep, doesn't and have flash. Looks like he'll be able to get away. Oh, maybe not. This advance comes in, Marin in a lot of trouble, or Duke came in with the taunt, rather. Yeah, overstayed his welcome in the top lane a little bit. Another just kill for Najin. Just barely, Nagin. just yep. barely. But yes, Maokai will go down. So, just a quick blue transfer. SKT, about 500 gold behind now. And Najin, again, the fact that they're even bit troubling if you are SK Telecom because Najin looking like if they can survive this laning phase and they've held on to this turret for longer than they thought they would, honestly. Well, OQ has his Trinity Force now too, so the power is really picking up fast for Najin. Well, the plan for SK Telecom has to be this. Push in the mid lane turret, continue to keep it pushed, and start having SK SKT's uh, mid laner and jungle dive OQ. You have to kill OQ. Easy Hoon has to be able to get himself onto the map, put pressure on the bottom lane, and kill this Kogma that is so fed. Very true. Can they do it? There's one thing that SKT has been doing a really good job on for the most part this game, and that's controlling the dragons. Aside from that one that yep. was stolen by Goon, they've done a really good job with that. And they have every opportunity to do that again. Yep. A little bit of a, a wrench in the works because they don't have that bottom tier one anymore, but their, their presence in mid is dominant at the moment. So Goon, fortunately for him, will be getting a blue buff. That is going to be absolutely crucial to Najin's ability to prevent their mid turret from going down. And the fight over the dragon is commencing already. They're gonna get Bangi out on the Dark Passage. Some good wards down by SKT for the moment. We'll see if Najin can clear those out. Probably can. They have the information they need though. You can see Marin already just wandering down because he has this long lane to deal with. Doesn't want to have to use that TP if not necessary, but as the wave picks up. Oh! oh. Wow, that was close. Close to a crab steal there with the death sentence. No kidding. Close to an 80 carry steal, too. Well, turret getting ever lower. A tense moment for SKT here. They really need the dragon. They really need the pressure on the mid lane. Bengi pushing people back with the culling. Needs to be careful, though. Watch is there. And he's going to go in onto Wolf. Wolf actually has to flash over the wall to get away. Yeah, afraid uh -oh. of a follow-up from Pure there, for sure, who was course, already yeah. in the river. Pretty much. Still. Marin waiting to see if he needs to TP down. Doesn't need to quite yet. I think SKT is just wanting to hold this as long as possible because they keep getting the 1v1 with the Victor versus the Azir. So they're slowly whittling down that mid lane tower. Yeah, Ezeun is 30 CS ahead of uh, Goong this game. Yeah. Oh, Bengi comes in onto OQ. Nice explosive cast. Can they do enough damage? Shen ulting in as well, but they've got OQ in the box. Might be able to take out Wolf. They do, but can they win the fight here? Bang in a lot of trouble as well. Got caught by Goong. There's a kill. Three already for Najin, and Marin is kind of on his own. Ezeun, he needs to be a hero if they're going to come away with this from anything with this one. Oh, Ezeun gets caught by Pierre. Marin trying to zone a little bit. Ezeun going back to the wrong turret and watch. But the kill there, it's nearly an ace. Nearly a clean ace for Najin. They can push down this mid lane turret and then go right to Dragon. SK Telecom thought they had Najin out of position because OQ was inexplicably standing behind the Dragon Pit on SKT's side of the map. But there weren't any wards there from SKT, so they just ended up getting caught uh, in a pincer movement from Najin. And that was 
a major factor in that fight. It's all part of the plan. And the Dragons are even uh -oh. now for Najin. And Okay. Najin has so, a big lead. Obviously, this looks like a really good situation. You have Wolf and Bengi there, OQ all in his own, and Bang is there too. But guess what? They don't account for Watch being in behind. Duke gets a very good ult off, and Bang on the outside is simply 1v1 by Goon. You have to respect that Victor burst even when Victor is down. Now, watch Pierce play here. Flash, headbutt, pull, beautiful play to delay Easy Hood, and then they can chase him down with an OQ flash. Everybody flashing forward for that. Yep. And it pays off. That's for sure. Najin with a big lead now. 5-1-3 and three is OQ's Kog'Maw at the moment. Goon looking really good on that Victor as well. Yeah, those kills were immensely important to this Victor that was behind when it comes to CS. Watch wants another play here. Goong has his ult up. Wolf, though, will deter that. They have a ward to see Thresh. And they don't feel like going for the 2v2. So a very important Dragon going over to Najin. Now they have the kind of lead that SK Telecom should be really afraid of. They took the Lucian this game, and OQ is performing on Kog'Maw. The late gate damage, pretty scary. Now, SK yep. Telecom can still set up picks. They have Thresh, they have Maokai, a lot of single target CC. They have the Gragas to isolate someone and allow Bang to blow them up. But they have to find a useful situation to do that. And it starts with better vision control. Najin has now just totally dominated that bottom side. And all the work that Easy Hoon did on the mid lane tower is all gone. They lost the mid lane turret, they lost the dragon, they lost a bunch of kills. So it's going to be hard going here for SK Telecom. Yeah, pretty much. Now Najin pressuring this bottom side of the map. They've got the deep wards down. They can be aggressive in the jungle like this. Baron up for the first time in the game in about 40 seconds here. Najin will certainly be able to take it quicker later on. Not right now, but you gotta, you gotta start thinking about 10 minutes ahead and this Najin team is gonna be even more scary when it comes to Baron control then. Yeah, Duke getting a ton of damage onto the top lane too. He's just gonna kill it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he gets it. Oh, oh, oh not, maybe not. not quite. Okay. I see Marn coming up there. I didn't see the tree for the forest. <laughs> you definitely did not. There are a lot of trees on this map. I can understand why you make that mistake. There are. Lots of different kinds. Why is it called the jungle, by the way, when there are so many coniferous trees? That's uh -oh. a very good question. Oh, boy. Shen coming in. This is a taunt, though. It doesn't matter. Easy Hoon's dead. Goon coming in with a ton of burst. And Easy Hoon got the MVP last game, but this game has just been repeatedly destroyed by this Evelyn-Shen combo. Well, uh, it, I mean, it was a lot of the issues with his team trying to engage. Goon is going to get... Oh, you can't kill Goog right now. I don't think so. Duke is right there as well, too. Wolf is going to grab Amar and gets in the back lines. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Taking a little bit of Kog damage Maw. here. Bang coming in. This could be good for Najin. Yeah. OQ turning around a lot of damage onto Bengi here. As he backs off under turn, it's going to be a tier two for Najin. As they've got everyone zoned out pretty effectively. Oh, they thought they had caught Goog, but there was no damage source there. Yeah. Bang's just not doing enough yet. Easy Hoon was well, dead. Bang I wasn't, mean, what do you expect? Bang wasn't even there. Easy Hoon was dead. Bang wasn't there. And they, they think that they can kill Goom or catch him out while the Chaos Storm is down. But that's not going to happen. And OQ easily able. He was just pushing at the Tier 2. Just saunters up into that side of the jungle. Very poor play from SK Telecom, considering oh boy, what's going that's on. Oh, boy, The desperation, Baron. That's right. And they're staying out of the vision, too. They actually managed to Clever. skirt the ward in the Clever. brush. They're going to get it. Oh. Or are they? Ward coming in. Oh, Bengi they know not now. expecting this. Yeah, they see Benki coming in, and there's a Baron for SKT, so they do take that. Najin with a pretty big vision error there. They all recalled simultaneously. Oops. Duke had his TP, but going in there 1v5 would have been suicide. Everyone else with no presence on the map. SK Telecom finds a hole. They get well. the pink ward in and just manage to find a gap where Najin doesn't have vision coming through their own blue side. I didn't see any Arnold Schwarzenegger on the map, and that means that that total recall was not good. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> the worst kind of total recall. Yep. SKT, what can they do with this Baron buff now? I don't think they're going to be able to do too much with it, Doa. 
Uh, they'll be able to fight Dragon with a Baron buff, which is a nice bonus. True. Maybe they can take the remainder of the Tier 1s, but I think that even that is a pretty tall ask for SKT right now because they are so far behind in gold, and the damage from Goong and OQ is pretty big. Yeah, that's the thing is, I mean, even if they can push up and take a couple turrets, how are they going to match what OQ can do? And more importantly, how are they going to get in onto OQ and blow them up? They're going to need to pick. They're going to need to get lucky. OK, so here we go. Najin at least making some room in at the Dragon now. We're going to get the Scuttle Crab. Will SK Telecom fight this, or are they just going to go for turrets? Okay, uh, they want the Tier 1 in mid, yeah. It's good. All right, they get it. And Dark Passage will help Easy Hoon get to safety. Now it's time for the Dragon. They're tied up right now. SKT could really use this second one. Uh, they need to do something with these extra Baron stats. Wave pushed into the bottom side bank. Recalling right there. Needs to go back and, I guess, pick up a Zeal. Interesting choice of timing. Uh, well, picks up the static ship, but okay. still, I mean, they're lucky Najin just isn't going for this right now. Oh, wow. They want turrets, SKT. I guess so. Well, they've got That's the Baron smart. buff. This is the time to do it. Marin zoning. Goon comes in. He's got some damage, but the Baron minions are a little bit too strong for that. Gravity field laid down. They're going to get this tier two. Oh, Najin coming from the flank. Nice grab. Keeps Pierre from engaging there. I think they that don't was, get the turret, but it was close. Yeah, that's still really smart of SKT, but unfortunately, Duke's split pushing is actually successful, so they answer yeah. with a tower of their own. And Shen coming in on to watch. There's a San United. Can they get the dragon getting low? It does go to SKT. Bang, though, completely caught in the pit. Fails his flash, gets taken down by watch. And now the fight going really well for Najin. Marin has to flash to get away. Knocked <laughs> right back in. Denied by Pure. That's two kills now for Najin. They lost the dragon, but they got a top turret and then some. Yeah, nice turnaround attempt from Marin there, but Pure just punting him right back into harm's way. Makes him use the twisted advance to get out, but still too much damage. Najin now pushing down. They have a big minion wave in this top side. Will be cleared. SKT just trying to scramble to save their tier two turret now up in top lane. Going to give up that blue buff over to Goon. Was low on mana, so he could use it. Let's watch that fight again. Yep, another great engage from Evelyn and Shen in this game. It's yep. been working time and time again for Nod and Bang. Like you said, fails his flash over the wall. Marin stuck in the pit. He's going to try and flash out himself, but pure fast fingers, flash headbutt to get him back in. And he gets caught up in the gravity well, and that's about it. Yeah, pretty much. 15 to 4. The kills for Najin, I mean, man, they have certainly found something they're good at. Getting kills. That's, I mean, I like it. That's what happens. You can make a lot of reliable ganks with the Shen-Eve combo. And this all came back to the early game where those early summoners taken out from SK Telecom really allowed Najin to repeatedly gank that lane, yeah. take advantage of Bang and Wolf, and even though they were getting all this chip damage in mid and top, they misplayed in that team fight in the mid lane, and that reversed all of the edges they had gotten. Instead, they lost their mid turret, and once you lose that advantage, it is really difficult to come back against a team composition like the one that Najin is running that simply has better late game scaling. Yeah, that little tiny overcommitment to uh, harassing at the grump by Wolf really, really cost them. Talk about a snowball effect, huh? Yep. But Najin has shown that their shot calling has been much better from ahead. Recently, they are able to more convincingly close out games than they used to be able to. And I'd be worried if I'm SKT because they lost the early game in every single game tonight. Yes, they turned it around in the last one, but lading phase has not been kind to SK Telecom. Yeah. Well, SKT moving on to Najin's side of the map now, getting that blue buff, but they're going to lose more up in top lane, it looks like. Baron up in a minute 30, OQ having no trouble at all, just split pushing. He's got protection in the mid lane, so he's perfectly safe wow. right now. Najin figured out how to ward for a split push. What is this? Well, they're human Where was this? Too. Where was this last game, Najin? I don't it, know. It wasn't there. Had to learn. It's going a little bit too kill crazy on the Riven and the Zed, that's why. 
Like, we got to fight all the time. <laughs> Another tier two. That's a turret lead now for Najin. Najin can't split push with a seven and two Riven. Can split push with Kogma. <laughs> Hashtag just Najin things. <laughs> Whatever works, right? Whatever works. It's solo Q. Oh, SKT. In their own jungle right now. Najin getting very aggressive. They managed to secure that red buff for Bang. Unfortunately for SK Telecom, Dragon 5 is going to be so late for them. It's another big change from the last match. SKT able to control that dragon and at least in games one and two dictate when team fights would happen. Yeah. Oh, this kind of deficit and Baron up in 24 seconds. Gotta think that should be an easy, easy bait for Najin. No teleport on Marin. Two globals for Duke. Yeah, and Easy Hoon just hasn't been able to get the team fight results that SKT had last game either. Way behind in damage. Now, it's interesting to me that SK Telecom really has not played well against Chen. Um, in their match against CJ, Shai Shen was a big factor in CJ's Whoa, victory. Watching a bit of trouble here, Goong. If he can get this kill, it's huge. Oh. Shen coming in with the Sand United. There's a flash. Shen goes for the top, misses nice it. Nice dodge. Can Easy Hoon get out? Marin trying to catch Goong as well. Bang over the wall. There's an explosive cast. They get Goong. SKT. Have they somehow found a way? to start turning this around. Killing Goong is not enough, but it's something. Wow, that was absolutely huge. Goong getting caught out again. This was one of the big factors that caused Najin to lose in game two and never be able to set up a proper 1-3-1. And it happens again. Yep. Bang able to kill him, has to use the summoner heal because Goong's damage is so high right now. But can they get objectives off of this? Can they turn it into another dragon or something? It's still going to be very difficult for SKT to win, but yeah, it's not outside of the realm of possibility as long as they can keep getting picks like this. Yeah, we'll see. And again, we talked about it. Even though they have the inferior late game team fight, they do have the better pick composition. They can isolate targets with several different forms of crowd control from their top support and jungle. And let Bang and Easy Hoon just do the work on single targets. Well, Najin muscling their way into the river near Baron right now. And if they can get the Baron buff, obviously that would be pretty helpful. And at least they've got the vision in the Rift Scuttler as well, too, for that speed shrine. Marin's able to split push again now that he has TP. Starting to stack up some armor with that Frozen Heart. Oh, Flash! Oh, play. They oh. got the Flash out of Goong. Flash used by Wolf, but that Flash on Goong just a bit more valuable right Here now. Go. They're going to chase, so Wolf in a lot of trouble. Agony's Embrace used by Watch. Going to push people away with that explosive cast. They're going to come in, throw down the box, and slow up Najin. Nice headbutt, pulverize onto Wolf. And a pick coming the other way now. Going to go after the Dragon, and this is going to tie up the Dragons in favor of Najin, unless Benki can pull a Miracle Steal here, throwing the barrel in. Can he do it? He's got no Thresh Lantern to get out. He's uh, not going to nope. go for it. Yeah, didn't have a flash to get in either, or out. Uh, too risky. It's only dragon number two, but at 30 minutes being tied in dragons means that SK Telecom, who really need a Baron buff or a dragon buff to fight evenly against the Victor Kogma, are going to have a lot of issues. Well, like you said earlier, that fifth dragon potential for SKT has just been pushed back by another six, seven minutes, and, and uh, that's really hard to deal with when you're already behind like yeah, this. Yeah, it's really quite brutal. So, SKT, now they have to set their sights on this Baron, but Najin has a nice number of wards already stacked up there. They've got to work their way through it. Bang, finds a pink ward and starting to switch that vision control. Watch here though, and if SKT gets caught right here, Watch is in a really good position for flank. Oh, he's in a really good position. Yeah, he's thinking about okay. coming in. They're planning it. They I disperse see. a bit. Let Easy Hoon know. is uh -oh. kind of vulnerable here. Easy Hoon chasing here Watch. Go. Here comes Shen again. Emperor's Abide used to push him away. Can Shen get the taunt? Doesn't matter. Easy Hoon so low already. No summoners. It's taken out. Lantern comes in a bit too late. And SKT in big trouble. Nice double knockup comes in. 
from Pure. That's a lot more damage now onto SKT. Bengi and Marin. Marin tanky, but is it enough? Bang gets a kill, though. Could turn this one around. Watch taking a lot of damage. Uh, he's zoned out by the Chaos Storm, so. Yeah, both mid laners one go for down, one. though. Yeah, Duke is healthy, but Marin still yeah. has TP. Oku doesn't have a lot of mana right now, so the poke is not very strong at the moment for Najin. Don't think anyone can take Baron yet. No, they can't. It would be way too risky, especially yep. because Marin, they know he has TP. They know he probably went back. So engaging in that 4v4, uh, when you have the Baron attacking you, means you're probably not going to win. It's pretty suicidal. Inconclusive fight. Looked like it was starting well, but Goon got too far forward and didn't respect Bang's damage. Goon doesn't have any Zonia's Hourglass yet, so he really can't be going in that deep. Well, Easy Hoon caught for the. Yeah. It seems like the. Well, let's watch what happens with Goon here. Where is does his gravity field go? So he pops his ghost, then he comes around. Great hook by Wolf. Yeah, Wolf just responding really, really fast. Great explosive cast from Bengi and. Wasn't really a lot Goon could do. He walked right into a hook, didn't really get to do anything besides put down that Chaos Storm, which didn't accomplish a whole lot. Yeah, and he shouldn't have been there that soon. What he should have done is just waited around the outside of that wall because they already had two of them isolated and just tried to close off that gap with a Chaos Storm and not get in range of Wolf's hook. But Wolf played that very nicely. Yeah. That's the danger, of course. Walking around when Wolf is present. All right, a lot of damage here. on the watch. Calling use bank connecting with a ton of it. Ooh, very nice. Wow, watch poked out really heavily. And this is going to give SKT a little bit of an edge in Baron control as watch has to recall. Baron trying to steal the blue buff away, taking whatever little edge they can. He will hand it to Easy Hoon in the end. Yeah, SKT. Yeah, they were, Duke was looking for that engage, too. It's really bad that Watch got poked out because Duke wasn't split pushing. He was standing in Fountain Ugh. right there, waiting to come in, and instead had that their main engage tool, which is Watch, was forced out. Well, there goes the Azir turret. Marin just keeping that bottom lane pushed up. He's got his teleport, so he can Jeez, Marin's certainly played this, do that. Marin has played this pressure game so well. When you think about the fact that he hasn't had to use his teleport yet, when you consider things like Watch coming in onto Easy Hood and then the ensuing fight, he has just been in the right place at the right time. He's only pushing out a little bit and then recalling every single time so that they can react to the Baron pressure. Yep. Marin's just... Presence in the lane, then recall, then get back into the top side has been perfect because Najin hasn't been able to find that time to force his port or to have a 5v4. Well, this is the thing about SK Telecom. When the going gets tough, these guys can really, really buckle down and everyone starts playing their roles very meticulously and very well. And SKT is at least giving themselves a chance to come back in this game. Yeah, and they keep getting wards into, which is yeah. so crucial. Because Marin is there in the jungle as a five man, they are able to answer some of this. Keeps on throwing those saplings in too, so just constantly keeping eyes on people. Now Marin will recall to try and push back out in the bottom side. Yep. But this hold from SKT is pretty impressive because if that TP goes down, they're gonna be really in trouble. Duke. At this stage, in the, this late stage of the game, having those double globals, he's got the short cooldown because he has lo three levels in his ultimate. Well, it's big, too, because behind all this, Bang is really starting to become a force to be reckoned with, too. And in crunch time, we know Bang can really carry on this Lucian, too. And Najin, I got to say, they're, it's starting to look a little bit shaky. They're starting to look like they don't really know what the best plan is right at the moment. Well, they've, they've tried to get these picks. They've tried to use the Eve Shen, and they were successful. They just misplayed the ensuing up. They may have caught Wolf here, though. Oh, he's going to come uh, in. Uh, Wolf, there's a play. Agony's Embrace. He's calling pushes away. Pure, though. And they're going to go all in on the Wolf. They're going to get the kill here. Box laid down. A little bit of damage. Bang can't go in. It's too dangerous. Goon firing the Death Lasers from over the wall. Duke came in with that stand united. Oh, getting very Bang's low going response. Huge. So easy and getting a lot of damage in as well as Bang. And Oku on the run here. Can they catch him? Everyone slowed down. 
Yeah, that's Wolf slow. Not, Wolf not being there is a big problem for SKT right now. Can they go over the wall onto Goon maybe? They've got the ward. Yeah, no flash. Now, what does SKT do here? Do they try and go for this dragon? They committed so much. Duke still has his TP, so... I think they can go for the dragon, yeah. I mean, teleport, Duke recalled. He canceled his recall. He can teleport back in. It's okay, so Bang is going to go for the dragon after he pushes up okay. the mid wave. As they wait, remember TP still up. Wolf is alive again as well. Oh, Here we teleport go. Teleport coming in for Najin. They're going to try to make a play here. Bang on the outside of the fight, getting some decent damage. That Duke comes in oh. as well, though. Kill for Easy Hoon right off the bat, though. Oki responds, getting very low. Easy Hoon comes in. He could be the hero. Will he be? Misses with the Q, gets it anyway, though. Double kill for Easy Hoon and SKT. Going two for two right now. Can they chase down Marin? Najin wants this one. Marin very, very low, gets in the gravity shield, has to flash out of the gravity field, rather. Nothing oh, shield about that. That not. was so close. But man, if Easy Hoon hadn't gotten on top of OQ with that combo, that would have been a very different team fight. Bang was caught out of position. He was taunted early, and OQ was able to unload an entire Victor combo and kill him nearly immediately. Well, it still results in the dragon going to Najin, and that's their third now. Well, it's, it could have been a lot worse because could've it been. looks like they're could've getting been. caught out. And look at this, Bang dies instantly. And look, Easy Hoon decides it's time for me to be the hero. Exhaust goes down, he nearly just kills OQ instantly, and then able, is able to position his last Sand Soldier to finish the kill. But if OQ lives through that, Najin probably wins the game because they will get the Baron and then start pushing down into the mid lane. Yeah. Well, Najin with the Dragon advantage now, and still pretty close. I mean, these team fights. You look at the gold total, it's fairly similar. You look at the items, and it's fairly similar as well, too. SKT, if they get... It's it's still really anybody's game at this point. The picks are going to kind of determine the victor here, I think. Well... And a pick on victor will <laughs> make a, a victor of SKT. <laughs> so many victors. That's right. Which victor will be the victor? <laughs> okay. Another setup from SK Telecom. Remember, they don't have TP now, so they they probably will have to play this more aggressively. But maybe they can get vision control and get a pick. Let's see how much they're going to be willing to give up for this one. They're looking. Notice that they're now starting to push out oh, much more. Oh wow! Boom. Okay, Duke are they going to go for the Baron now? They have to. Yep, immediately. Yep, go for the Baron right now yep, because Duke it. is so dangerous in the current position. They're going for it. All right, they grab Pure. Can they get this Baron here? Baron a little bit low. Watch is coming in, Big Agony's Embrace, Baron getting lower, gets taken by SKT, they're gonna turn on to Najin now, Watch in a bit of trouble here, Marin in the back lines and Goon can't get too close, big explosive cast, splits him up, can they skirmish, Bang with the kill there, Watch gonna go down his own, Bang he gets one, Pure in the back lines, another, it's a double kill for Bang, SKT somehow, some way, they found a chance, they took a triple kill, for Bang at the end. Bang and played I think that, that team is fight the end. so well. He flashed forward onto Goong Man. to get that last kill. That's going to be the end of this game. SK Telecom, that decisiveness. Goong once again caught out and chunked, and they don't flinch. They know this is their best shot. Yep. We have to go now because we have no answer to the Shen split push. They pull it off. Goon can't do much of anything in that fight, and SKT wins the game. Wow, what a comeback by SK Telecom. This is why these guys are on top of the league. They are going to exit the regular season with only one match loss. Impressive stuff from SK Telecom as usual. GG. Wow, what a comeback there, too. Yep. What a comeback from SK Telecom. But. SK Telecom took home the victory tonight, still looked a little bit shaky in the in the laning phase, had to kind of clutch it out in a couple games in a row. That's the thing, but though. You, you never see a team able to repeat on clutch performances as often as SK Telecom can. Yeah, but Najin looks a lot better than they used to. I think we yeah. can definitively say that as well. I agree. Najin, they're going to have a hard road through the playoffs. They're unlikely to win this season, but... I'd be a little bit afraid about them coming into the world's gauntlet because they look strong in that laning phase and their yeah. decision making in the late game has improved